Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Uh, it looks like the freaking stream deck is being is being a bit of a chode right now. Hold on. Hold on just a second. I, I really need to just like make a habit of just restarting my stream deck any single time that like or rather or rather like uh whenever whenever I'm about to like start a stream, I just need to reset my fucking stream deck just entirely because this because it always happens. It just kind of intermingles with some other audio source and and it just gets really funky and weird. Hold on, hold on. Hold on just a second because 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 a little thing that I do where like I come up and and I'm just like, "Hello everyone. I need I need to I need to have it. I need to have my stream deck." Hold on just a second. Oh boy. Where are you, task manager? Yeah, hi. Hi everyone. Uh how Game over, yeah! You're welcome for that one. <laughs> I knew I knew I had to put that one in after, um, after uh last week's festivities. It seemed to be a big hit amongst all of you. So you know what? There it is. It is now a chat redeem. Is now a chat redeem for you all. Okay, let's let's see if it works. Okay, great, great. Yes, 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 yes. It does. Now I'm here. Hi, hi everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome to uh, tonight's Long Boy Club meeting. I am the president of the Long Boy Club. Graph of Steph. Uh, Zach would be here with me right now, but he Hi. had to. Hey, 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 Zach. I was, I, I was uh, just talking about you. Hi. Yeah, I literally just came back. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I had a, uh, I had an unexpected bloody nose. Oof. Well, well, here he is now. Uh, the president undead is proving that he is undead and that he cannot be killed. Ever. Yeah. So. <laughs> bloody nose. Bloody nose won't kill me. <laughs> a, a bloody nose. Uh, driving to the hospital before your wife uh, gives labor. Uh, oh my God. Nothing can, n nothing can stop him. Nothing can stop him. Speaking of, ain't uh, no stopping me now. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of driving your wife to the hospital, uh, Gitsy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Segway. Uh, so yeah. Tonight we are going to be watching a series of videos called called the complete history of gaming in the Clinton years for those of you who are unaware and if you're watching this rather rather if you're watching this uh, channel right now it's probably not many of you but just in case gaming in the Clinton years is a fun little series of videos on YouTube uh, made in the uh, 1990s initially as part of a wider TV series. Uh, they were later re-uploaded onto YouTube, uh, what, in more? the mid-2000s, and the channel that they've been on has had absolutely nothing happen on it since. And um, more, um, they're really more specifically, What? More, more sp specifically, from 1993 to 2000. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the guy behind them, well actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and save that for the actual videos that we're gonna watch. Because that's probably all going to be mentioned in there. I hit the wrong thing on my board. Oops. Oops. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, hi chat. How are all of you doing tonight? Oh boy, what is Twitch chat going to create this time? Uh, you know what? After last Saturday, I've just... I've just kind of said, you know what, whatever, whatever happens is, is not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not my fault anymore. Except it really is. Except it really, really is. Do not, I mean, like, if, I mean, like, obviously if I catch anybody being dicks then you'll hear from me, but I haven't seen that so far. So you know what? You're all in the clear. You're all in the clear. I, I, I I feel, I feel like I have to. I feel like I have to. Uh, I have to ask this since we're gonna be watching big Gitsy videos. Any uh, uh, 
big gitsy videos anyways should we uh 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 disable the the the, the redeem for tonight fuck no <laughs> no <laughs> no no are you okay. crazy <laughs> we, are, we are not disabling it because listen listen it is for one thing it's become a very popular redeem uh yes and to and to uh, the only alteration that I would ever make to it is making it more frequent. <laughs> Honestly, that way that that, that way we can have George Wood on top of George Wood, but that'll probably be for like I don't know an anniversary stream or something. Uh, but yeah. Uh, sorry. But tonight we are going to be watching these videos right here. The Complete History of Gaming in the Clinton Years. This is part one of two. Uh, Zach told me that there are, like, update videos on this same channel. Mm -hmm. But what it really caught my attention was when these videos were posted. Because, <laughs> yep. because I only learned about gaming in the Clinton Years, like, uh, like a few years ago, right? I only learned about it, like, when, like when uh, Ding Dong started referencing them. Uh... Mm -hmm. Sorry, like when he started referencing them like on his Twitter. This was uploaded in 2018. This feels this feels way too old to me, you know? That's uh, funny. You know, it's funny. This is up uh, around the same time Catacris did his video on him. Actually, it wasn't. It was it was actually two years early to the punch. So. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was 20, was, 20. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 This was two years beforehand. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we are going to be watching these videos here this evening. Uh, it probably won't be the most laugh out loud funny stream, but it will certainly be educational. And I feel that I feel that we have kind of made gaming in the Clinton years a bit of a cult sort of thing within my tiny little community. And uh, you know what? I was sort of on the fence about you know uh, doing this beforehand, but you know what? It kind of seems like something we'll have fun with. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we we are going to be doing that. And it's going to be really low key. We're we're just going to kind of hang out and we're just going to be befuddled, or rather, rather be uh, befuddled over just the existence of this and the existence of George Wood as a human. <laughs> yep. Oh, 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 boy! Look, before we start, uh, just just the idea what the audience is in for reading that wonderful description <laughs> it really just encapsulates everything here mm -hmm. george wood in his show gaming in the clinton years may be the most infamous series of video game reviews on the internet but who really is the insane man behind the brilliant idea to give Lara croft breast cancer <laughs> Part one of this two-part documentary will cover the years 19... And by the way, I will... I, I will not... I, I will not entertain any, like, uh, breast cancer... Um, or rather, are there any uh, breast cancer um, elongation on my stream? <laughs> <laughs> Create a scene in which Laura gets... Yes. Yeah. Part, part, part one... Rather, a part one of this part two documentary will cover the years 1993 to 2000, where, where uh, Wood and his public access show Flights of Fantasy uh, took the world, and by the world, I mean the greater Bowie, Maryland area, by storm. <laughs> As someone who works at a local news station, I can, I can probably surmise just how like large we're talking here. And, and trust me, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Because <laughs> Maryland so is not a very big state. <laughs> no, it isn't. And so when it's and so when it's really just a larger area like of one city, then you know, uh, limited reach. I think technically I knew about it before Cat Icarus, but it was only after his video it stuck with me. It stuck with me, uh, like as I was watching uh Ding Dong's uh Twitter and Twitch streams, but uh, yeah, like after Cat Icarus. Uh, made a video on it. Uh, Gitsy became a bit more well known. So, yeah, but not so well known to where every video is like, <laughs> it's like ten thousand views plus because a lot of them still are not over ten thousand. A lot of them are just kind of in obscurity. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean to be fair, a lot of them are just kind of, rather, 
<laughs> Rather, like, a lot of them can be just kind of a pedestrian. But there are a lot of them that just have really weird things in them. Like, the Mario 64 one is just all weird. Uh, I, I, Toy Story I, is a fever dream. <laughs> I, 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 as I remember the, the NFL uh, video you show, it's like, wow, that was really normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I almost feel like I need to watch, like, the Gitsy videos I include. But... <laughs> You know what? I enjoy finding out the weirdness at the same time, or either at the same time as a uh, Twitch chat. So you know it. Uh, 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 like up. the ending, like the ending to the Final Fantasy VIII review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I literally I didn't watch it all the way, and so and so when he said, "If there's if there's if there's no voiceovers in Final Fantasy IX, then I'm game ending myself. I hate text. It it really <laughs> it really took me by surprise." Uh huh. But no, uh, I will say, uh, before we get into this, I need to ask. Also, hi, Ashley. I need to ask, how are you doing today, Zach? I am. I am doing good. Nice. Good. What have you been yeah. up to today? Uh, I finally caught up with Dynamite. Uh, and watched the, the YouTube videos and, and hang out with friends. Ooh, nice. I've yet to watch this week's episode. Hold on a second. I got a sneeze. Giraffe sneeze. <clears throat> Jeez. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I've yet to watch this week's episode, but um, I know that Hobbs won the title, which yep. Which I don't know why you would put it on Warlow just to take it off of him. But is it just so? Is it just so they won half heel versus heel? <laughs> I mean, I mean maybe. But, but they've done heel versus heel a couple times, and I think both of them are like over enough to where it could work, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, uh, really, really just kind of killing Warlow, really fucking killing Warlow on his feet, huh? With the assist, hey, hey, hey Logan, man, where's assistance from QT Marshall? God damn it! <laughs> what a fall from last year. This uh -huh. time last year, Warlow was the hottest thing in the world. Now, <laughs> who is he? Who the fuck is this fucking jabroni? Uh, 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 man, it makes, man makes, it see, makes it sound like he is in the WWE. <laughs> With but, the hell of guy sometimes. <laughs> he has the, dude, he has the body type that Vince fucking looks for all the time. You know? He, and, 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 he has and that yet body Vince, type. And yet Vince fucked that up sometimes as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he fucked it up predominantly, like with guys who couldn't work, like, like Kali, mm -hmm. uh, where like they were all bod but no, you know, showmanship or worker skills. Like mm -hmm. Batista worked because you know he he was a big guy, but mm -hmm. but but. He was still a captivating worker on top of it, you know. So yeah, I'm I'm just just reminded of the way he they uh, he fucked up Braun Strowman so much. Ryback did do it to himself. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah, fuck Ryback. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know what? Ryback and CM Punk have one thing in common, and it's that they hold the grudge. <laughs> they are bitter motherfuckers. Uh, yep. So you know, even though Ryback doesn't let the thing with CM Punk go, they at least have that in common in that they're petty as fuck. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, hold a grudge. He's fucking made a career out of it. He basically has. I remember. Hold on. I remember. I remember back when. Uh, oh wait, hold on a second. Uh, before we get too far into it, I'm gonna share my screen with Zach. That way we can watch this. Rather watch this together. Yeah, well, don't don't want too much preamble. I mean, I don't mind preamble. I mean, like especially during like a thing like this. But we will we we will get to this in a minute. But first, I I need to show you this. Mm -hmm. So like Ryback posted a poll a few years ago that was like, oh this. <laughs> okay, I blocked all the trolls and whatnot, and. It, <laughs> and he's like and he's like uh 
sorry. Um, <laughs> and he's like, uh, where do you guys want to see me go? Look at this. <laughs> Do the fraudulent votes from the last poll. We have to redo where you want to. S this has nothing to do with with that, and is the official vote. It can greatly impact my future, so don't vote. Retire. <laughs> vote retire. <laughs> retire. We have blocked all trolls and fraudulent accounts who negatively skew the other polls. This is the final and official. Where do you want Ryan back to return? I ask you, don't vote. Retire as a joke. It's as legit as it gets, and I will have no chance but to respect the results. Retire. Overwhelming. Like, as a, look at this. If, don't even compare. If you don't want people to vote for retire, then don't, don't vote for retire, retire, you <laughs> fucking dingus. <laughs> you know what? You fucking probably continue doing that with the soul... Rather, with the sole intent of getting attention, you know, because mm -hmm. like, why else would you put the same poll up multiple times with the same options just for it to be skewed again a few times over? Like, this is the biggest, this right here is the biggest series of L's in all of wrestling Twitter. <laughs> oh. You're more than here on time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you are, Jay. We are just about to get into the meat of it. But I just wanted to show how fucking pathetic Ryback is and how much of an attention seeker he is because because he has no wrestling talent. So, so you know, mm -hmm. he has to make up for it somehow. <laughs> Anyways. This. Woo. He really does hand himself the L's, yes. Anyways, Gaming in the Clinton Years, guys. The History, Part 1. Let's go. In June of 2006, a YouTube channel called Navigator began uploading video game reviews. Yeah. To put it mildly, they were a bit strange. Released yeah. as Gaming in the Clinton Years, the reviews were, as the name implies, of games released between 1993 and 2000, with yes. the vast majority of them being releases for Nintendo consoles. I'm very... I'm very glad that he continues to use. While like, each the video was footage. ostensibly meant to <laughs> yep. review the game in question, like he doesn't even find like good footage of these games, which is readily available on YouTube. You can find footage that is clear of all these games, but he uses the Gaming in the Clinton Years version. <laughs> they were often yep. much more than just reviews. Videos would often spend over half their time walking the viewer through the game or talking about cheat codes. And when it came to the actual review portion, it seemed as though the narrator was almost a bit unhinged. He would make bizarre, inappropriate jokes at inopportune mm. times. He would often lose his train of thought and begin talking about something <laughs> completely unrelated to the game being reviewed. He would even... It really is just like a Twitch stream. <laughs> ...and at yeah. times, attempt to provide <laughs> the video game industry with tips for upcoming games There's that something were a ludicrously comforting about tasteless, the quality of the game including footage. an infamous suggestion to give Lara Croft the heroine of the Tomb Raider series, what do you mean by that? breast cancer. With all the oddities of the Gaming in the Clinton Years reviews, it didn't take long for the videos to find a cult following among video game fans. Most notably, in 2008, Slow Beef and Diabetes of the popular YouTube channel Let's Play made a series of videos mocking the absurdities of Navigator's content. Stage in about five tries. <laughs> Wait, so you should be able to do it in five tries if you follow the strategy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so does that you're gonna fail 80% of the time. It's like you're watching well, it straight off of VHS. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Like this is the quality that you would find most like old school game commercials in. Navigator provided little to no context for their content, with one of the only- Just out of curiosity, when are we going to find out the history of all these gladiators you made? Uh, <laughs> that will be at the end of this month. Uh, that is still being worked on. I need to finish up the kinks in it. But, but, my hope is to have it ready to go and do the first pay-per-view. Well, pay-per-view, quote-unquote, before WrestleMania. Only clues being a terse note that says the opinions expressed in Gaming the Clinton Years don't represent those of Navigator, instead expressing the original third-party 90s writers. With that being the extent of easily obtainable information, it's not hard to understand why just, misinformation just began Just throwing to George Wood under the bus. referring to the narrative <laughs> himself as Navigator. And I didn't even know why, about that. In the mid to late 2000s, someone would be reviewing games from the 90s as though they were current, 
Even Rhett's Pidei, who helped popularize gaming in the Clinton years perhaps more than anyone else, were not immune to this confusion. I'm glad he warned me about GoldenEye and put this video up on June 22nd, 2007. So, hold on. I want to take a small detour. Okay. I need to know how old this channel is and how, oh, like, and how like long ago these videos were put up. George Wood. What the fuck? These are way too... These are way too recent for that mic quality. <laughs> it's now 2018, and while there's a number of websites scattered around the internet that talks about these videos, there is, as of yet, no You're single not responsible exhaustive for the old source of rants. information about them. I intend to uh, change just, that. Mm. <laughs> this video will span the entire 25-year history, yes, 25 years, of gaming in the Clinton years. 25 years?! Yeah! <laughs> what?! Yeah! The 1993 and 2000 is just like this weird pocket dimension, then. Oh boy, they did stuff after 2000. <laughs> Holy fuck, chat, we are in for a ride. Yeah. George is so unhinged, I'm surprised he didn't make ex-wife jokes. He fucking seems like the kind of guy that will be like, I hate my wife's cooking. Where did uh, they uh, fun, fun fact, fun fact, George Wood is actually married. <laughs> come from? Why are they so bad? Who are the men so behind true. it all? Those questions and much more will be answered in the complete history of gaming in the Clinton years. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's like coming home chat. <laughs> so let's start by getting some initial confusions out of the way right off the bat. The YouTube channel that uploaded the videos many. in the first place, Navigator. Who are they? It turns out that Navigator is actually an acronym that stands for the National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers. This has to be a money embezzlement scam chat. <laughs> As their website- I fucking told Zach beforehand, but this has to be just a giant front for like the Yakuza or something. As their website says, they're a non-profit organization that administers an awards program recognizing specific and specialized skill sets for video game art, technology, and production. Huh? They give out awards for video games, basically. Alright, that's fair enough. But it doesn't answer the question of why an organization out, to give out awards for video games started uploading reviews of video games. Reviews ostensibly made over a decade before they were uploaded. To answer that question, we need to go back to that terse explanation Navigator provided as context for gaming in the Clinton years. Remember, it says that the opinions of gaming in the Clinton years don't represent those of Navigator. That message, as it turns out, is a complete lie, because the reason why Navigator uploaded the Gaming in the Clinton Years videos in the first place is because the same man is responsible for both of them. <laughs> so George Wood is the founder of Gaming in the Clinton Years and Navigator. Yep. <laughs> I literally thought he was just a guy employed by them. What? <laughs> to write no. their non-profit who's... Who's uh, going to pay for this? It this is, is George Wood, George is both the narrator of Gaming in the Clinton Years and the man in charge of Navigator. To tell the complete history of Gaming in the Clinton Years is, by extension, to tell the story of George Wood's life. <laughs> As it turns out, that's a surprisingly tall order because, despite being in charge of a fairly prolific video game so, awards uh... outfit and the butt of jokes of gamers across the internet, information on this guy is not easy to come by. I did, nope. however, manage to dig up a They're few very things. very Joker-esque. Wood was born in 1955 and is a native of Bowie, Maryland, a suburb of Washington, D.C. Wait, wait, Bowie? He attended the University yeah. of Maryland at College oh. Park in 1963. Oh, I thought it was Bowie. And by 1981, he began working as a consultant and project manager for the National Ideas Center in Washington, D.C. Now, I don't know much more about the National Ideas Center other than the fact that it exists. George Wood 2024. <laughs> chat <laughs> existed, but based on this brief advertisement from a December 1990 TV. issue of Field and Stream magazine, they seem to be an outfit designed to help inventors secure patents sure he's for their inventions. Edge. This we'll would square that. well with Wood's own words about his experience. In an interview on the Wealthy Speaker Show, a business show hosted on Blog Talk Radio, 
Wood claims to have over 26 years experience in obtaining patents and trademarks. In any case, Wood left the National Idea Center in 1993. Are you fucking telling me he's like a year, lawyer? He hooked up with Bowie Community <laughs> Television, or BCTV, and began producing a show called Flights of Fantasy. So, like, he has, like, ex he has experience in, like, public speaking, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Then why is it set? Then why is every video like he's reading off a fucking teleprompter all the time? I don't know. What kind of public speaking experience well, is this? I, I, actually, I think we might have find our answer very shortly. <laughs> That's like that is that that is so fucking sus, dude. It'll make sense soon. <laughs> Flights of Fantasy is the source of all the reviews for gaming in the Clinton years. Though not every episode has survived, if you're interested, you can actually watch a number of complete episodes of the show on YouTube right now. And if you do, assuming that you know George Wood entirely from the embarrassing things he said about video games, something about the show may surprise you. We need to watch some of these episodes sometimes, chat. And you'll understand what I mean after hearing the introduction to the very first episode. Hello, my name is George Wood, Hi, George. and I am the host of Flights of Fantasy. This is okay. the first television show dedicated to the world of collectible arts, comic books, cards, science fiction, horror, and the other I've aspects never heard of nerdy stuff hobby. described now, as Now, he mentions a lot of things arts. there, but video games, notably, are not one of them. In mm. fact, the entirety of the first episode is exclusively dedicated to comic books. George interviews Sky wow. Hanna of Bowie's Twilight Zone comics. Hold on, this is a big one. George looks like the default character from The Sims that someone has uh, pressed the randomizer button so many times that it's gone back to the beginning, but some of the glitches have remained. Uh, he really does. I mean, like, Ashley, Ashley hit it on the head. Look at the sweater. That fucking sweater yeah. is one of the glitches. Uh, <laughs> that sweater is one of the glitches. Like, you just find the loudest sweater in, like, The Sims 4 or whatever. And, like, there you go. You have... This side, this side make people Wood. look... This is how you make people look at you. <laughs> and a hobby. Now, he mentions a lot of things there, but video games, notably, are not one of them. In fact, the entirety of the first episode is exclusively dedicated to comic books. George interviews Scott Hanna of you Bowie's Twilight Zone Space Comics, Station, you said it. and the two of them discuss the latest trends in the early 90s comic scene. Obviously, this means a lot of talk of holographic covers and beloved heroes comic. getting killed or maimed, Death of Superman style. But regardless of what you may feel about American comics in the 90s, there's no doubt that Wood is deeply knowledgeable and passionate about the subject. In his interview on The Wealthy Speaker Show, Wood claims to have a collection of over 27,000 comics, and Jesus. based on what I've seen in the earliest episodes of Flights of Fantasy, I have no reason to doubt that. Episode 2 is the Turbo first time Dork, Wood dude. discusses video games yeah. on the show, and the tone okay, and knows, presentation, hey, when compared to his comics. discussions of the comic book industry, could not be more different. Well, welcome video gamers on another fantastic segment of Flights of Fantasy. Today we have our video guru, Mike Groves, here to show us Sonic Hedgehog 1 and 2. He Sonic couldn't sound Hedgehog? less yeah. Sonic Hedgehog Sonic. chat. Yeah. One of my favorite video game franchises of all time. Sonic, Sonic Hedgehog. Hedgehog. <laughs> so, so uh, George Wood is secretly an incredibly wealthy weirdo. I love Sonic Hedgehog. So do I, chat. Oh my lord, mm -hmm. this man has no idea what he's talking about. No, no, I know, I know. The first sentence. The first sentence, and we're already in for it, dude. Man. Interested in the subject. I mean, he even gets the name of the games wrong. Couldn't sound less interested in the subject. I mean, he even gets <laughs> the name of the games wrong. Sonic Hedgehog 1 and 2. Now, I want to go into a fair amount of depth with this segment. For a couple of reasons. For one, I think it's a pretty remarkable foreshadowing God. with regards to how Wood reviews games in the future. But also, mm -hmm. it's a complete train wreck. And I don't think very many people who even know about gaming in the Clinton years or George Wood knows that it exists. So I, uh, I only figured out that like this portion existed a couple weeks ago when you told me, Zach. Yep. <laughs> Let's start at the obvious. This guy sitting next to George Wood. His name's Mike Groves, and while he'll continue to play a behind-the-scenes role in episodes of Flights of Fantasy over the years, he never appears on screen again after this segment, and you'll soon see why. 
He has almost no stage okay. presence, and many of the things he says are beyond awkward. Jumping. Okay, chat. I want you to I want you to observe this man, and I want you to tell us straight laced if we have more stage presence than this fucking dork. In the air, using the A, B, or C button. At that point, Sonic becomes supersonic. Okay. He's invincible. He's unbeatable. And he can't die. Not only that, it certainly doesn't help that they film this segment by pointing the camera directly at the screen, often leading to portions of the game being cut <laughs> oh off. Oh my god! I got it really, really just like DSP. <laughs> oh! Take me oh. back to the Dark Ages. <laughs> yeah. Take me back to the fucking dark ages, dude. Uh, this, this, is old, this right here, this, this right old here, YouTube right here. <laughs> this right here is how you did let's plays back then. Listen, for as much for as much as we love to laugh at gaming, <laughs> 4K upscale this. Uh, <laughs> for as much as we like to rag on Gitsy, they were they were ahead of their time in quite a few ways, honestly. But mm -hmm. like no, you can you can even see like a like a bit of a scratch up here too. Yeah. This is weird. You can see the reflect you can see the reflection on the screen. <laughs> you can. This right here looks like one of the let's plays I recorded when I was like 13, dude. That being said, <laughs> notice what he's choosing to focus on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show Hi, you guys, through it's... each cartridge how to select the level, how to beat the level, and most importantly, how to turn Sonic into supersonic, which makes him invincible for as long as you can keep rings up on the board. You must guys, have at least 50 Rubik's rings to have this happen. So when I show you how to put the code in, WWE keep 12. that 50 ring level up and you'll never die. Part of it is on codes. Another is on how to beat the boss. This is more or less what Wood chooses to focus on in his later yeah, reviews. Really snacker, the Another thing to saturated. notice is that, despite being billed as a video game expert, and despite showing up on set with a Sonic t-shirt on, Oh my god, Zach, <laughs> this has the energy of, like, those kids, those kids being me, that wore NES <laughs> shirts back in, back in middle school oh. and high school, dude. Oh, man. It literally is just the one Scott the Waz bit and where he's sitting there with, with, like, with, like, a fucking uh, Nintendo shirt that's like, keep it retro, and he's like, I'm awkward. <laughs> Yeah, I, this is highly making me weirdly nostalgic. <laughs> it is like, like this energy is so weird, chat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I keep pausing this, but like, I'm just like so fascinated by this, you know. Mm -hmm. Video game expert, and despite showing up on set with a Sonic T-shirt on, oh, Grooms so awkward. Really doesn't seem to know how to play the game very well at all. This is painfully obvious as the pair starts playing Sonic Two and Groves attempts to transform into Super All these Sonic. rings, you pick them up as often as you can, pick up as many. You notice now we have 54. Oh, what no. happens when you jump Sonic into the air? Oh. Zach! He does a repeat <laughs> He's jump. playing it so... He's playing it wrong. Uh -huh. He's playing it so there, wrong. That's the rings. Now what you have to keep doing is you have to keep running back and forth and collect 50 rings. Now, obviously no, that was unplanned. Don't do that! But the way they went about it could not have been more unprofessional. Maybe do another take. Maybe don't waste time by putting that clip into the final episode. No! This this aired on <laughs> this aired on public access TV? Yup. <laughs> yup. What the fuck? <laughs> Chat, for reference, okay. I'm a fucking Sonic Dork, so I am. Required by law to fucking tell you this, okay? <laughs> Don't go back and forth collecting rings an entire level. Just collect the rings you can and go to the end. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just collect the rings you can and get to the end. If you can transform the supersonic within that time period, cool. Also, uh, why is he trying to transform into supersonic in Emerald Hill Zone? Uh, I, 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 I also know this, even when he did with the rings, he didn't know how to transform to supersonic, he just kept jumping in the air. Yeah, you know why? Because he probably didn't have the fucking Chaos Emeralds! <laughs> he probably didn't even have the Chaos Emeralds because he's on the first zone of the game! You can't get them that early! Uh, it's uh, almost uh, impossible! Uh, uh, uh.
Uh, unless, unless he is a cheat. <laughs> unless, it, exactly, unless you cheat the win. Like fucking George, that, that right there is George Wood's mantra. That right there is his life, yeah, uh, that, that, that right there is his life status. Fa failing marriage, cheat to win. Hey, Logan, maybe this guy, uh, the way this guy's playing, maybe this was George Wood's inspiration on how to write game reviews. Oh, man. <laughs> This is legit like what a kid would do. First, first there a video not knowing you should cut the parts you fail. Like, listen, man. I'm I need to look into how like video editing was like done back then, but yeah, just cut this shit out. Maybe don't waste time by putting that clip into the final episode. Just pat Either it out, way, you know? They do eventually get Sonic to transform into Super Sonic, but unfortunately, that slight increase in player skill comes with a sevenfold decrease in review quality. Reaching the end of the level, we're treated to some painful attempts at sounding hip. Friends who have been captured by Dr. Robotnik, and Sonic returns to his normal blue blur, blazing self. We then move into the next level, where, again, they forego actually <laughs> reviewing or discussing the game, and- God, you can barely tell what's happening- And instead have a pseudo-philosophical discussion mm -hmm. about the nature of using cheat codes that borders on incomprehensible. The code that we just showed you is for actually giving Sonic as many lives as you, as you want to give him because he doesn't uh he can't die he has no enemies what so i that stretches what? out gameplay such as the game what? he can't die he has no enemies I have, yet i've figured out that no one fucks with sonic and you try to make the end of this man's um, missing game, jumping on the capsule i know oh, what uh. happen is you uh, you end up with a very low ring total and you end up not uh, being able to complete the game in the fashion and the manner that it's been designed you know, to do. Because what happens is it takes so long to get to the end of the game. Well, what is it? Does it stretch out the gameplay considerably, or does it reduce the time it takes to have to sit in front of the TV? And that's not even the worst of it. Their subsequent of discussion life, often becomes so obtuse that it can only be compared to some sort of avant-garde modernist poem. Level by level, hoping it really to is. at least 50 rings this shit right here, it literally feels, it literally feels like a Tim and Eric skit, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I, and I know why this this guy doesn't show up on screen again. <laughs> yeah, because he lacks charisma, dude. Mm-hmm. He, he fucking has less charisma than we do. Okay. At the end. Yeah. <laughs> to perform any kind of extra thing that Sega has put in as as an extra thing, you can do the level select as I showed mm -hmm. you how to get to this mode. Then you can become supersonic, pressing the 19C, 65C, 9C, and 17C. <laughs> like a good one there. What that does, your C button allows you to be invincible. That's the invincibility code. I love how George is just sitting there listening so intently to what can only be described as complete nonsense. I was about to Which, don't say. Worry, if that was too dense for you, Groves like, does mention his favorite Sonic thing about Dork, the codes. And, I and don't it's even something know that can be saying. appreciated and understood by new gamers and old pros alike. Stop insulting yourselves, you're both hashtag swag. There's a reason why I got up at 5 in the morning and it wasn't because I need to pee. Wait, wait, you're oh. up at 5 in the morning to watch us do this? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Although, also, take care of yourself, obviously. Yeah, yeah. If you're tired, obviously, go to sleep. But that is so fucking flattering. Thank you. Thank you so oh, much. Exactly, and the, the thing that I found most... Uh, I guess, you know, enjoyable and very helpful about the coding is the codes can be punched in to any cartridge. It doesn't matter. You can, if your friend has Sonic 2 or if you have Sonic 2, all you have to do is write it down and plug it in. The computer picks it up automatically. Really? Even in the NES days, even in the Atari days, the codes were all uniform. What? Why is he saying this like it's some sort of brand new development? <laughs> And furthermore, does he really expect his audience to be at all surprised by that? <laughs> the segment ends with this message from Wood. Education. What's that to say? Is this his first video game? I know, right? What? Dude. Do I remember writing passwords down on my GBA games. This mm -hmm. is not a new thing. This is not <laughs> so new. Rev so revolutionary. <laughs> Holy crap. He talks like it is. I know. I know, which you know, <laughs> which you know, <laughs> in a bubble, is really adorable. Uh -huh. But for our purposes, it is very, very, very weird. Hey, 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 hey Logan, hey, Logan, you know, you know, it's, you know, 
you know, it's sad when me and you would probably have more stage presence than this guy. <laughs> no, no, no. Apparently, chat. I mean, chat. I mean, chat is saying that we do have more stage presence than this. So you know what? We're taking that. We're running with it. We are. Mm -hmm. I can. I can. I can put it on our scoreboard. We are better than the other guy from Gaming in the Clinton years. <laughs> for those of you who will be regular viewers, Mike will be on as pretty much a regular segment as new games come out. <laughs> like I said, huh? that didn't happen. He never appeared on Henry screen would again, have more stage and Flights presence, of Fantasy never had would, a video it, game And he would just like chew on the that. fucking blinds, What dude? changed? Believe it or not, it was a high school student named Tom Allen. Huh? Most fans of Gaming in the Clinton years have probably never even oh, heard of Tom Allen. That's because he's you appeared on screen, on, as far as I can on tell, stage only once for a few seconds. Have more charisma. But if you look in the credits, you can see what that the he's fuck is that? for directing, writing, editing, basically everything behind the scenes. Unfortunately, like George Wood, Tom Allen's background is also shrouded in mystery. All we know for sure is that, according to the Wealthy Speaker Show, Tom met George in 93 and gave him what seems, in hindsight, an obvious idea. Rather than recording segments for the show live, instead they should use pre-recorded and edited segments. Of course, that doesn't answer the question of how this high school kid had all this knowledge of how to produce successful TV shows. What? But nevertheless. Yeah. Are you telling me that this guy had a... F <laughs> okay, so... Tom. Tom Allen definitely sounds like a John Doe name, for one thing. Yeah. But mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe it could be his name. I don't know. But <laughs> child labor, FTW. <laughs> <laughs> no, Blaze sure had more stage presence. <laughs> Tom a Tom Allen's blood runs cold. Chat. Hey, Creep Show with the ten viewer raid. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. I saw I saw you were playing Fortnite earlier, Creep Show. Thank you very much for. Send your community over here. We are watching the history of gaming in the Clinton years right now, and we're just being befuddled at basically every single turn. Especially and, the Sonic, especially the Sonic segment. Especially the Sonic section. Chat, I had a fucking aneurysm over that, okay? <laughs> I had a fucking aneurysm over over the Sonic segment that we just got through. <laughs> so yeah. Uh thank you very much for raiding creep show. I saw you were playing Fortnite. Uh but let me shout you out. In fact, Zach, can you shout creep show out? Oh, and what the fuck? And and Ellie is lost with the six. Hey. Sorry, with the six long voice girls, NBs, and AGs. Thank you very much for the raid again. Uh, hello there. My name is uh, Giraffasev. I am the very long and large lover of all things gaming, wrestling, music, and other hyper fixations. Uh, Right now, uh, like I said, we are watching the history of gaming in the Clinton years. We will get back to that here in a second, but Zach, can you shout out? Yes, yes, thank you. And also, can you shout out? Either can you shout Ellie's out lost. Ellie up there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Playing mm -hmm. the new Fortnite season. It is a good game. Yeah. Fortnite is good. It is actually it, very, very fun. With friends. But oh, Asterisk. Underscore is underscore plus yep make sure that you type it in good yep there you go go and follow both of them uh they are both very very lovely people uh um ellie uh you and i we should or rather rather i'm going to message you again at some point because because you seem really cool and uh you know um, I would enjoy uh, chatting D&D &D with you at some point because it's been a while since I played D&D. &D. <laughs> it, it's been a very, very long while. So, yeah. Uh, back, back to the insanity. <laughs> now, after those initial few comic-centric episodes, information on subsequent shows is scarce. In fact, episodes 4 through 22 right are now, completely Creature. lost. Thank you for the asking. only Hopefully footage we have well. from them is Hopefully taken from well the 100th well. episode anniversary special. As well as Raiders. From those clips, Raiders. it seems as though Flights I mean. of Fantasy remain dedicated to comic book content, but by the time of episode oh. 23, which is the next complete episode we have, Thank you for the focus becomes the much more heavily centered see, on video games. Though Flights will continue to discuss comic books and collectibles on game, it's indisputable that from this point forward, the show will be primarily a video game. With a secondary or maybe you didn't. TV show. Why the shift?
time of episode 23, yeah, which is the next complete episode we have, the focus becomes much more heavily centered on video games. Though Flights would continue to discuss comic books and collectibles on occasion, it's indisputable that from this point forward, the show would be primarily a video Ow. game one, with a secondary emphasis on movies and TV shows. Ow. Why this shift occurred is a matter of speculation, but I want to offer up a hypothesis. Okay. Okay. In the mid-1980s, the comic book market entered what could only be called a bubble phase. Mainstream media had discovered uh, the that there was, popped. potentially, a lot of money to be made in comic book collecting, with certain issues like Action Comics number 1 selling for well over uh -oh. a million dollars. Uh -oh. Well aware coming. of this attention, comic publishers began to pander. New comics were created with limited edition or gimmicky covers. At the same time, publications like Wizard Magazine helped drive speculation, and big-budget movies like Tim Burton's Batman helped create new readers. People would buy multiple copies of new comics in the misguided hope that they would make a huge profit down the line. As it turned out, virtually none of the comics released during this period became at all valuable, and by the early 90s the bubble had essentially burst. Keep in mind, the bursting of the comics bubble occurred almost exactly when Flights of Fantasy began airing on TV. George Wood admitted on the Wealthy Speaker show that Flights was meant to, originally, focus heavily on the business end of the comics industry, and that they initially talked about video games to fill time. But with the collapse of the comics market, oh, holy it's shit. possible that he didn't have as much to talk about. Or maybe continuing to talk about comics to that extent after the bubble burst would make them look like fools to any potential viewer. Again, this is all speculation, and it's admittedly pretty cynical to believe that George Wood, a man who has a collection of over 27,000 comics, would stop talking about something he obviously loves just because the money and attention wasn't there anymore, but I can find no other reason that lines up quite as well. I mean, well, that's listen. That's kind of sad, actually. <laughs> listen, if you're making a show, right, and mm -hmm. you, you know, like, obviously you want to keep making a show for an audience, then I can't blame him because, like, you know, essentially the comic industry, it seemed like it was going through a big shift, and that shift yeah, was losing money. So... Uh, yeah. uh, 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 like like astounding like the bubble burst literally i that was the exact same time flights of fantasy started that's actually about insane poor time talk about poor timing holy shit no seriously that's actually incredible that's actually mm -hmm. incredibly poor timing i honestly mm -hmm. feel a little bad for him because yeah <laughs> because if things had panned out a little differently if like if like the comic bubble didn't burst then then you know maybe we wouldn't have all of this weird content here you know yeah 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 it's so strange because yeah yeah if you watch those really early, uh, early episodes it's clear george wood is very passionate about comic books uh, <laughs> and there's one thing george would never do look like a fool <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> i will oh, say geez. that sweater you know does that goal a disservice but nonetheless <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah the speculator boom yep yeah yeah the dark ages of comics <laughs> that's that actually that? insane to think about mm -hmm. whatever the case may be flights of fantasy was now primarily a video game show indeed for a brief period of time the show seems to have rebranded itself as the video game show <laughs> what? these episodes have a few minor differences setting them apart from flights of fantasy First, That's awesome, the dude. focus is exclusively on video games, obviously. Second, though George Wood continues to narrate the reviews, he doesn't host the show. Instead, there's a rotating lineup of awkward, barely post-pubescent kids. Fair warning, today is just a boring filler show. Well, some of you may not find it boring. There are two other titles that were highly anticipated, and when they came out, they weren't as good as they were supposed to be. Where did they come huh? from? Why bring them on board now? I have absolutely why why do you bring them on board and then have one of them basically say that the show is gonna be shit? I know, it's just a boring filler episode. Just a boring filler episode, chat. That <laughs> That would be like me, right? Mm -hmm. That would be like me coming on here and being like, oh yeah. This fucking stream and where we're watching gaming in the Clinton years history. It's going to be dog shit. You know? Mm -hmm. It's going to be awful. Join the filler episode. It's going to suck exactly. 
it literally is just like a real real change the channel type type <laughs> vibes going on you know Mm-hmm. The show is gonna suck shit. LOL. It is the lip syncing. It's all some of the kids are better speakers than Jordan. They are. They really are. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Back when, back back when, um, every hero had to uh, grit their teeth and squint. Yeah, yeah, because they were yeah. so macho. Mm-hmm. That was nineties for you. Anyways, firstly, I should probably thank the Raiders. Absolutely no idea here. The video game show didn't end up lasting very long, and soon enough, it was back to the usual flights of fantasy shenanigans. It did not last very long. <laughs> Question. What is with all the green screen? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, these are so very obviously green screen people, you know? Mm -hmm. That were highly anticipated. Jeez. I'm having a bit of a weird time here. Yeah, so this is exclusively on video games. We'll just sort of let this play out here for a second. Thank you, Zach. Hi, Zach. Hey. Hi. Thank you. Hi, Thank you, Jared. Ashley. Um, I think this is real. Real. Um, Alpha Bravo. Hello. Uh, BB. Or rather, a BB Soccer Gamer. Uh, Biddles. Hi. <laughs> uh, hey, Biddles. Uh, Coach Carter. Uh, Creep Show. Um, Ellie. Uh, Lavender. Rip, sorry, sorry, uh, rip the uh, jacker, uh, shy puff, teen, oh. teen and eeny, I believe is how you say it. J, uh, triumph forks and Zoro morph 22. Hello there, thank you, thank you all for hanging out with us this evening. Thank you to Ellie and Creep Show for the raise. We will continue on here right now. Give me a second. Watching the reviews from the mid 90s, one can't help but be impressed by their consistency. Even then, <laughs> in terms we had of the what? classic gaming in the Clinton years, bad jokes, non sequiturs, and reviews that barely qualify as such. Tough spots. When you leave the game alone for a few minutes to plan your strategy, one of the characters will pick his nose, look at the booger, and express disgust. I'm not even laughing at the joke, I'm just like laughing at his delivery. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey internet, you wanna fucking cooperate? Yeah, Alright. Good lord. Express disgust, chat. <laughs> Express <laughs> Express so he delivers disgust. it. <laughs> He'll pick his oh. nose. Look at the booger and express, express disgust. disgust. Bubsy yeah. is one of the best action games ever created. You save your huh? progress by huh? calling your dad over the telephone <laughs> and refill your energy by eating pizza. Speaking of pizza, you can play the game with your left hand <laughs> and eat pizza hand, in the other. Pizza in the one other. other thing that stands out is what system the games the, the review are for. <laughs> Though their first review was for the first two Sonic the Hedgehog games, at no other point does Flights of Fantasy review a Sega Genesis game. In fact, they barely mention the Sega Genesis on their show at all. Every one of their early reviews are for SNES games, with a few Game Boy games thrown in for good measure. They're pretty oh, obnoxious the Nintendo Boy fanboys, overlay. as this infamous clip from their review of Donkey Kong Country more than George eating pizza. Oh, Donkey oh, Kong this Country clip. is truly perfect. If you do not get this amazing new generation of Donkey Kong madness, you are stupid. Yes, oh I God. know that's insulting, but it's also the truth. Like, come on, they're not even trying to hide it. As if that weren't bad enough, their fanboyism is so insane that it completely impedes any sort of rational thought. As evidence, here's a clip from a 1995 show where George Wood makes his prediction for what console will be a bestseller during the holiday season. Oh boy. So which will it be? PlayStation, Jaguar, M2, or Saturn? Jaguar? The answer is none of the above. There's another advanced gaming system that will win the war, and it's Virtual Boy. You heard that right. Virtual! The host of a... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> showing a picture of a game that didn't even come out for it. Yep. For reference <laughs> chat, this right here is a picture of a canceled Mario game on the Virtual Boy. All right. Yeah, can, can you tell they have a big buy towards Nintendo? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> really scraping in that Miyamoto bucks, dude. Yeah. Oh my god. If you don't like blank, you are stupid. Any insane franchise simp. You are stupid. 
chat. No, you're not. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Virtual Boy? Yes, really. <laughs> Video game themed television show predict that the Virtual Boy will outsell the PlayStation. And this isn't an isolated wow. case. Flights of Fantasy went all in on go. the Virtual Boy. Now, take your head unit, place it into the support bracket. You want to be very careful and do it gently from the back. So you tilt it in first, then push it down. There's a little spring in the back here that you can push down to open up the support bracket so it doesn't go in tightly. Release the spring and then gently tighten it up with a tension control knob here on the side. Why does George Wood make just installing the Virtual Boy sound like rocket science? I know, right? Also, thank, also, thank you for the follow, Biddles. Like, uh, if you, like you he's have to fucking explaining like phys like, like, like he's fucking over here explaining quantum physics when like all he's doing is tying the knot on the virtual boy. <laughs> if, if you have to explain like rocket science, and that's that, that's a failure of the system itself. <laughs> <laughs> <That's so dope. laughs> mm. <laughs> I can't believe George is ri You don't. It is. It. It is proof that you don't need to be, um, rather, rather a proof that you are not needed, uh, to be smart. Sorry. Sorry. Proof. Proof if you needed more that you don't need to be intelligent to become privately wealthy. Jeez. Uh, don't worry. I'm Elon Musk proves that all the time. That sounds pretty hot, George. And when they got around <laughs> to actually playing the games, their reviews weren't as critical as you would expect from, you know, the virtual boy. For NES, Red Alarm is a 3D flight game that mesmerizes yeah, yeah, all who play it. The, the depth of the 3D graphics is outstanding. So what exactly is the source of this Nintendo fanboyism? Again, I can only speculate, but I do have a hypothesis. Okay. I mentioned earlier that aside from video games, Flights of Fantasy occasionally talks about movies and TV shows. Indeed, it seems as though George Wood is quite into movies, but he seems to only discuss big budget Hollywood blockbusters or Disney films, basically anything with spectacle. Much like his Nintendo fanboyism, his love for blockbusters leads him to make judgments that most among he us would find his versatility. <laughs> I know, I know you're gonna do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally kid who gets entertained by jingling keys. I know. Like I just Titanic proves if you kill a main character, it adds to the experience. Which means Zach. Um, I need to kill you then because huh? because that will add to the experience. Uh oh 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 well you well you see you can't kill me because I'm already undead. I hope that you die another slow and painful death over exactly three hours. Uh oh oh. We don't want to tell you everything that happens in the movie, but we will say the final scene is super. In fact, the whole movie is super. super. Bad taste aside, this preference for spectacle does, in a way, help to explain why he remains so relentlessly positive when it comes to Nintendo products. <laughs> At the beginning of his infamous Donkey Kong Country review, Wood makes a big deal about the game's graphics being fully rendered using silicon graphics computers, and how the process was comparable to how the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park were made. From this, he logically deduces that video games will soon be able to rival Hollywood in terms of graphical prowess, and Nintendo is going to be the vehicle in which this graphical prowess will be delivered. Almost from the beginning, Wood seems to have near messianic hopes with regards to the capabilities of the Nintendo 64, then still called the Ultra 64. With this kind of control, yeah. plus the feature of four controller ports, the NU64 will bring gaming to a whole new level. In other Star Wars news, you can expect next year's Shadow of the Empire for the Ultra 64 to be one of the best games ever made. Everything I've been talking about, I think, comes to a head during the review of Toy Story. So I want to, like I did for... I don't know if I can chat. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Don't. I don't know if I can carry on with this shit. <laughs> we must. <laughs> Can't take it no more, chat. Further review Can't of Sonic the it. Hedgehog. Focus on it in a bit more detail. Pay particular attention to the first thing he says. 
When you pop in this game, the first thing you notice is the poor edging on Woody, the main character of the movie and the character you control in the game. The Toy yeah. Story movie was done with silicon graphics computers, and the instruction uh -huh. booklet says the game's graphics were created with the same 3D computer models that were used in the making of the blockbuster movie. We don't know, however, if the game actually used silicon graphics computers. I am pretty sure that George Wood is the only person on Earth who noticed the poor edging on Woody before anything else. But he goes on for two whole minutes talking about silicon he graphics. He spent so long on it, chat. Why they weren't used for the entire game. <laughs> this right His here, this right here is the identity of this video. You know, <laughs> just him, just him going on a completely disconnected rant about silicon graphics computers. Uh, Giraffe says Twitch stream was made with silicon graphics computers. Talking about silicon graphics computers and why they weren't used for the entire game. His entire rant seems like a bizarre justification with regards to why a 16-bit video game doesn't look as good as a Pixar film, which just makes him sound insane. After about two minutes, as I said, he finally starts giving some criticisms regarding the gameplay, like unresponsive controls and a punishing difficulty, but after only a minute, he starts talking about a stage select cheat because, and I'm using his exact words here, you can't win Toy Story without cheating. He then goes into another <laughs> bizarre pseudo-philosophical query on the purpose of cheat codes, ending with what seems to be after hearing Mike Gr a wait, telling Toy Story without cheating, and this cheating brings victory much too quickly to warrant spending your money. People don't spend 60 bucks on a game they know they can beat. With that in mind, one wonders why companies release game codes and stage selects. After hearing Mike Groves speak, I'm convinced Groves wrote everything George said. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, God. I honestly really wouldn't be surprised, stuff. you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Video game buying has become too much of a game. No pun intended. The game is about finding a game that's not too hard, but not by any means easy. Codes and other cheats make about? games easy and not worth buying. Unfortunately, there's no way to tell if a game will last, or if a code will be released that makes it yesterday's news. There is, however, one last bastion. Role-playing games like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy III. What? These games will never fail you as far as challenge goes. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. It's just such a tonal whiplash. <laughs> is that hot? <laughs> go from go from Toy Story to the fucking Chrono, Chrono Trigger <laughs> in Final Fantasy. <laughs> but they have text, George. No, I thought you hated it, dude. I thought you hated text. <laughs> what the fuck? But the potential for these games to become interactive movies has yet to be realized. With the Nintendo Ultra 64, however, that will surely change. That last <laughs> part says... My fucking dude would cream himself over, like, <laughs> over modern <laughs> friggin' Naughty Dog. And Quantic Dream games. And especially Quantic Dream. That fucking minigaming where you're taking off the bra, like, with motion controls. Like, he would... Like, he would call that, like, the Citizen Kane of video games. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yes. Internet. Yes. No trigger in Final Fantasy 3. Oh, these games will never fail you as far as challenge goes, oh, but George the potential for these games to become interactive movies has yet to be realized. With the Nintendo Ultra 64, however, that will surely change. That last part says more <laughs> about Wood's desires as a gamer than perhaps anything else. He has a history yeah. of giving heaps of praise to role-playing games, and here he gives his justification. They have an acceptable difficulty curve, and, what's more critical, they have the potential to become interactive movies. You can see where he's coming from. RPGs are known for being cinematic, and in the 90s, they were arguably the only game genre that Descriptor could apply to. He That's true. believes That's true. with time, the cinematic quality will only grow, and the Nintendo 64, with its silicon graphics and its 64 bits of power, will usher oh in God. that cinematic age. That's so funny. Because yeah. <laughs> you can count all the RPGs that were released on the N64 on literally one hand with fingers to spare. 
Yeah, there's only like two games there I can think of. Three RPGs. There's Quest 64, there's Ogre Battle 64, and there's Paper Mario. That's mm -hmm. it. Those are the only <laughs> yeah. RPGs on the N64. Uh -huh. Nintendo 64 wasn't even really 64-bit. Was it not? I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're telling they lied to me and wasn't a marketing ploy? <laughs> this is literally the first time I'm hearing about this, Ashley. <laughs> what? The Citizen Kane of Breast, we know how much he loves talking about breasts. Oh yes, the Citizen Crane of Lara Croft and Breast, whatever. That all being said, the rest of the review completely goes off the rails. Remember how many complaints Wood had about the graphics? Well, listen to this. Yeah. Actually impress you. Although Toy Story's graphics aren't perfect, they are pleasant looking, and the gameplay is refreshing. As a review, oh that's useless. It completely contradicts what he said earlier in the video. How the hell is a viewer supposed to know what to think about the game? Most of the rest of the review is, in actuality, just a walkthrough of the game's first two levels. But George can't even hold his attention span still for even Knock that. away with your pull string by pressing A to free the action figure toy named Biff. Speaking of action figures, take a look at this one. It's a takeoff of Blanca from Street Fighter 2. <laughs> also notice the similarities to other Street Fighter characters on the package design. Aha! We caught these guys ripping off Capcom. Anyway, let's get back to Toy Story. <laughs> I will say that that side tangent is very adhd terrific. <laughs> You know, I know, right? Mm -hmm. I relate to that really hard because that's something I would do. So I can't be mad at him for that. <laughs> I can't be mad at him for like going off on that. But then again, also, this was on public access TV. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> this was on TV. This was this isn't this isn't some shitty Twitch stream. All right. Brief hyperfixation on this single figure, dude. It's ADHD rific. I get it. Where the hell so. did that come from? The video ends, unbelievably, with this. Bottom line, when all is said and done, Toy Story has better gameplay than either of the Donkey Kong Country games. Okay, I what? give up. As a review, this video tells me absolutely nothing about the Toy Story video game, but it does, indirectly, tell me a whole lot about what George Wood wants for the future of the video game industry. With that in mind, let's see where Flights of Fantasy goes during the era of the Nintendo 64. I mean, again, he was he was off by about twenty years, I, I, but I, I, he would I eventually get that, that in some respects. So it, it is it, it's mind blowing. He was expe he was ex expecting like the Nintendo sixty four to 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 look like Hollywood movies. <laughs> mind blowing. Video games, video games still don't really look like Hollywood movies in a lot of respects, but like. Mm -hmm. They're not meant to look like that because they're not Hollywood. They're mm -hmm. video games. Fuck, fuck, fuck cinematic. I want video game attic. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You can still see the little line at the top of the screen. Can you? Oh my God. Yes, you can. I think I, hold on. I just think that's part of the video. I literally thought like, oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I would. I mean, like I was second guessing myself thinking, wait, is this part of like the videos or is this just like my monitor and like and like it just has new battle damage that I never noticed. <laughs> I don't know. George Wood oh, had yeah. his issues. My left ear oh, loves my... this chat. <laughs> yeah. None of you should be surprised by this, but George Wood and Flights of Fantasy basically stayed the same as console gaming entered its fifth generation. Super Mario 64, which was probably the closest thing at the time to what he was looking for in the future of video games, gets a surprisingly ambivalent review. You can do just about anything. It is, in fact, like jumping into the movie Toy Story. But don't get all psyched up about traveling to infinity and beyond just yet. Although the gameplay and graphics are very cinematic, the basic setup and plot of the game is no big surprise. After a few days of playing the game, it starts to get old. The game is way That's too so short, to only 15 about. main levels. Uh -huh. Most players will beat the game in less than two weeks, unless they plan on getting all 120 stars to gain access to Yoshi. So it's like being in Toy Story, which should be high praise, but it gets old quickly. <laughs> it's too short, but finding all 120 stars is a chore? Again, he seems to like it, but there's always a lot of question marks around that. Yeah, I know. It's certain the game made an impression on him, though. 
He uses it as a benchmark of quality for what seems like any game released afterwards. Yeah, yeah, like, the graphics are good. Like the character is cool. <laughs> but this game is just another 3D romp that wishes it could be Mario 64. But even with that praise, George still isn't satisfied. The cinematic qualities of the game still aren't up to his standards. He doesn't give up, though. He just continues to do what he always does and await the savior of the industry. still very young, though. The Super NES didn't start off with Donkey Kong Country quality, so don't expect tomorrow from the N64 today. We still have to wait for the 64DD, as it's called. This disc drive <laughs> add-on will be used in the N64 games of the future. Hey guys, remember the 64DD? No? Well, that's not surprising. That's because it was never released in the out. US. And even in Japan, yeah. it was a colossal failure with only out. 10 games being released in total. Needless to say, it wasn't the savior he was looking for either. Wood acts like a conservative. I I I I disappointed when the rapture doesn't come the day he predicts it should, simply moves it back a few years, not once thinking that maybe it's his own predictions that are disappointing him. Anyway, not everything <laughs> stayed the same during Flights of Fantasy's new era. So, the PlayStation so emerged as a major thorn like in the N64's side, yeah. and Wood could no longer ignore the competition as he did in the past. So for the first time in the show's history, Flights of Fantasy began regularly reviewing games not for a Nintendo console. Though this was a major change, their bias remained as noticeable as ever. This bias, so far as they're willing to admit, comes from what they perceive as an oversaturation of certain kind of games Play on the magazines system. Magazines reported that 80% of all PlayStation video games fall into either the racing, sports, or fighting genre. These genres often account for low quality copycat titles and just plain boredom. Even with all this, he can't. Wow. <laughs> wow. Who that's a take? <laughs> I mean, listen, man. Sports is. Like, if you are taking, like, sports, right, mm -hmm. and you're just looking, wait, 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 hold on. Night, honey, I love ya. Sorry, hold on, count, count those percents. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Certain kind of games. Oh, man, dude, you're having me go back. I don't think YouTube can handle this. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and Atari Jaguar this. Let's do the math. Uh, 35, 60, 79. This is apparently 79% of all PlayStation games. <laughs> At the time. <laughs> At the time, asterisk. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, I will say that sports is, you know, even taking, like, yearly sports releases into consideration, that's a mm -hmm. broad thing, you know? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's a very broad thing because that doesn't take into account things like things like more gimmicky sports games like like NFL Blitz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. And more like gimmicky baseball games and shit like that, you know, mm -hmm. and NBA Jam, I believe it's called <laughs> and NBA Jam and shit like that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. this man has the audacity to insult the best console of all time, the humble PlayStation. <laughs> Oh, uh, you can see, you can, you can feel the N6, you can feel the Nintendo bias seeping through. <laughs> feel the salt, dude. Yeah. A salty, a salty spittoon. Reported that 80% of all PlayStation video games fall into either the racing, sports, or fighting genre. These genres often account for low quality copycat titles and just plain boredom. Even with all this, he can't entirely be on PlayStation. As we've seen, Wood is huge into RPGs. And when it comes to RPGs on fifth generation consoles, the N64 simply could not compete. All they nope. really had was Quest 64, which this review shows he didn't really love. The game love. develops too slow, and the camera angles are some of the worst ever. We're not exaggerating when we say that you play half the game not seeing what's in front of you. That right there is enough to tell us to stop. There were tons of great RPGs released during the PlayStation the life cycle, though. That being said, the game that Wood decided to praise the most will probably come as a surprise to many. Okay. What is this? Yes, Wild Arms. Wait, wait, Wild a Arms? A game that's by no means bad, yep. but one that would probably not be held up as the pinnacle of PlayStation-era RPGs by anyone. But that's what Wood considers it. Oops. Although, again, it's telling what he chooses to focus on in his review of the game. My... <laughs> My man George would uh, 
would uh, count uh, GTA as a racing game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I was about to say, like, what kinds of games are we are we lumping to, into racing? To, 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 to especially the first two GTAs where it was top down. <laughs> no, I mean like, I mean like I know that there are racing elements in GTA, but that's only a mini game, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean that's only a mini game in the larger game that is GTA. So, like when we say racing, like are we talking about like you know laps or just getting into a car, <laughs> you know? Yeah, all right. Who uh, remembers this game? I mean, I do. Yeah, it was I'm on the familiar. PlayStation Classic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, Sony was familiar with it. I mean, like, I'm familiar with it, but, like, I've never played it. So, yeah. I mean, like, I'm 23, chat. So, like, a lot of the PlayStation's library is, you know, a huge blind spot for me, unless it's Crash or Spyro. So, yeah. A Wild Arms was a, a good game, really. I hear. I hear it's a very good game. Stev, it should be better and more creative, like... Like, like, like uh, not being pulled over by the cops. God. Are you upset that there isn't a portion in this game and where a character is driving to the hospital? Wild Arms has something Chrono Trigger could never yeah, have, a full motion animated opening sequence. In this pure flight of fantasy, you will recognize typical characteristics of Japanese anime, the hero's wild pointy locks of hair, and an absolutely serene effect of lighting and shading. The actual game itself receives little to no attention, while instead he chooses to lavish the highest praises on the opening movie sequences. It's nice, to be sure, but the amount of praise he gives it is completely out of proportion to what it deserves. In comparison to his love of wild- Holy fuck. Did you see that down there, Zach? No, I didn't. Did you see the grade that he gave wild arms in every category? Oh, yeah, yeah, A, A is across the board. <laughs> Apparently this is like the greatest game of all time to him. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, what's going on? You just do not hear- I'm going to refresh. Hold on a second. Recognize typical characteristics of. Oh boy. Pinnacle of PlayStation era RPGs by anyone. But that's what Wood considers it. I'll now, I will say a comment like that is pretty um, subjective. Mm -hmm. You know? Because, like, yeah. a lot of my favorite games are not games that you would consider the greatest of all time. You know? Mm hmm. So. I don't know. But that being so, I mean, like, I'm a very firm believer that rather like I am a, a believer that some games can be greater than the sum of their parts to some people. You know, I mean, like, I really love Sonic Frontiers. It's one of my top five 3D Sonic games, but it's very rough in a lot of areas. But that doesn't really yeah. matter to me because because, you know, I enjoy what it delivers on. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Wild Arms was a good hand. Oh, uh, that's... Although, again, it's, it's telling it what he chooses to focus on in his ocean, eyes, tip, and in little to no attention to what it deserves. Just barely even focuses on the game itself. Look at this. All A's. Yep. That's crazy, chat. In comparison to his love of Wild Arms, his opinions on what is probably oh the biggest RPG of the PlayStation generation, if not the entire decade, are much more controversial. Final Fantasy VII has never been popular among it's the fans. It's way more important what something makes you as feel can be exactly. seen from their reactions to the demo. Before even looking at Tobol, we anxiously and excitedly booted up the PlayStation to play the Final Fantasy demo. What a disappointment! We were expecting magic. <laughs> we were expecting the best game in the world. We were expecting an interactive movie. But when you get right down to it, this game doesn't come much closer to this dream than does Final Fantasy III for the Super NES. Wow! The kinds of games that George Wood wants are like DVD menus, it feels like, you know? Yeah, and it's also what I was doing. Dude, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. <laughs> mm -hmm. What you want. <laughs> he would love like Nickelodeon DVDs in like the <laughs> mid and early thousands, you know? Yeah, he, he, he would love. He, he would love a far, far away idol in the Shrek Far, community. far away fucking idol? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> like he like he would go through all the options too. So Yeah. He's basically said, I'm not angry, I'm disappointed. He definitely sounds mad. Again, Wood seems to be the victim of his unrealistic expectations. He wants Final Fantasy VII to completely revolutionize everything, and because it's still similar to the other contemporary RPGs, it's a failure. Of course, he can't help proclaiming Nintendo's supremacy at the end the of the review. The never move. Is the game still worth buying? We can't say until we see the finished product, and things may change, but that's highly unlikely. It sure makes you appreciate the Nintendo 64. It's more advanced than we gave it credit. When Nintendo games don't meet his expectations, wow. He's more than willing to give it the benefit of the doubt, but Sony products get no such luxury. These controversial views continued after the game was released, but they managed to make them even more incomprehensible. Publishing Square's work. While this is clearly the best role-playing game ever made, it does not provide anything new in terms of game design. If it's the greatest RPG ever made, as they just said, we aren't made to understand why. The rest of the review attacks basically everything, from the say. gameplay to the plot, I mean, like, if it's if it's the greatest RPG of all time, right? Mm -hmm. And you're sitting here saying, oh, well, it doesn't do anything really exciting. Then what's so exciting about it? You know? Yeah, all right. Uh -huh. Like, what exactly you do I, as a fan of RPGs and a Final Fantasy fan, have to expect out of this? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To the music and sound effects. The enemies take too oh, long this. to defeat because the game has turn-based battles a staple in role-playing games despite their unrealistic nature. The music and sound, well, they blow chunks. And for all you parental types out there, chill. There is nothing wrong with regurgitation analogies. It was so controversial in its day that, surprisingly, enough of their viewers wrote in to complain, and they actually responded to those complaints. Though their responses were just <laughs> That's as so funny. To further support yeah. that claim, let us say this. Number one. The movie scenes that advance the plot are separated with much too long periods of play. Interrupted by far too many instances of play? This is a video game. What the f fuck were you expecting? <laughs> Again, he would love he would love the DVDs on like Nickelodeon or rather or rather like the menu games on Nickelodeon DVDs in the early thousands. Dude, dude, dude he would totally love Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> yeah, he would. Yeah. Because honestly, that game doesn't know when to shut up. <laughs> it doesn't know when to just let me fucking play. So yeah. I mean, like that can be said for a lot of modern Final Fantasy stuff, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, uh could you imagine if he had or rather uh rather could you imagine if he did the review of Three Kingdoms? Three Kingdoms. Oh. I know. Why does that sound familiar? Final Fantasy Three Houses. <laughs> no, uh, uh, that's your crossover. <laughs> Final Fantasy. The Three Kingdoms. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh, is that Final Fantasy fourteen stuff? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna exit out of the Ryback stuff. Bizarre as their reviews were, what interests me the most is the fact that they had enough viewers back in the day who complained in such force yeah. that it caused them to respond. Yeah! That begs the question, yeah. how many viewers did this show actually have when it was on the air? This is a difficult question to answer, of course. The show aired on BCTV, and from perusing through a few archived news articles, BCTV's programming seems to have been available in the Gambrels area on Comcast Channel 8. Looking at Tom Allen's LinkedIn page, we're given Comcast? a Comcast. Yeah, no wonder it's more shit. information. According Ew. to him, Flights of Fantasy was syndicated between 1994 and 1996 to 25 million households, and they apparently had. No, the uh, game you've been playing in the school three. You mean you mean three houses? Yeah, it, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's three houses. <laughs> I was about to say, is uh, that what you're referring to? Had enough clout to be represented right. at MIPCOM, an annual TV. On 25 million. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but 
you also have to ask how many of those 25 million actually cared about video games, you know? <laughs> how many of those 25 million cared about video games? Probably not many. <laughs> I, I, I look and pr I probably have to probably have to click on the thing at the bottom left and like nope. 1994 okay. and 1996 to 25 million households and they apparently had enough clout to be represented at MIPCOM an annual TV industry trade show held in Con. This all sounds trade a bit show. unbelievable for a show like this but at the same time does. there's documented proof that the it, flight's crew managed to get around yeah. when they were on the air. They attended E3 a number of times, and even managed to get a trading card based off George Wood's likeness. Yes, that's right. In what? 1994, there was a trading card game designed by Ed Beard called, I shit you not, Flights of Fantasy. <laughs> I need to find this card and make it into oh. a sticker on my fucking Discord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, just see what it looks like. I need this in my life chat. In their Anarchy expansion set, a card called the Cosmic Adjudicator was released that's obviously supposed to be wood. I have no idea how this arrangement came about, but it exists, and come on, just look <laughs> you at the have thing. To. One last way the show changed during the N64. So like, so like, you know, sorry, sorry you know uh, Mysterio in Spider-Man mm -hmm. 2? Yeah. It gives off those same vibes. To me. Yeah, it does. It gives off the vibes of Mysterio. Look at him. <laughs> like, I expect this to be Jake Gyllenhaal. Just look at the fact. This I, is weird. One last way the show changed during the end. Yeah. I, I, I'm just amazed that, that they have enough cl uh, clout to go around to, to be in things like E3 and shit. <laughs> oh. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mysterium for Mysterium from one of the reject universes. N64 era Mysterio, was the increased yeah. attention paid to movie and TV coverage. The show always paid attention to upcoming movie releases in the past, but during these later shows that coverage went up noticeably. It was still primarily focused on big budget blockbusters, with one movie in particular getting the lion's share of the attention. <sighs> I'm not claim yes. my fucking vibe. Flights of Fantasy absolutely loved Titanic. Why? One can only guess, but it was both the most expensive and the most successful movie ever made at the time, which plays right into the kind of movies George Wood seems to love. Even so, the amount of screen time devoted to that movie is embarrassing. In fact, in this writer's <laughs> opinion, the single most embarrassing moment of Flights of Fantasy... I love Titanic and so does my dad. Confession, chat. I've never seen mm. it. Have you ever seen it, Zach? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I've heard it's good. I've heard it's good. But, you know, it's not my genre. Happened mm. because of Titanic. This was in episode 121, the same episode where Wood tells the world his brilliant idea to give Lara Croft breast cancer. Yes, huh? I'm arguing that there is a more embarrassing moment in that episode than that. Here well, it listen, is. Listen, folks, I hope you have a great Christmas. We'll leave you with Titanic. I'll see you next year. Come on. <laughs> I know the movie was a phenomenon at that time, but really, even after the release of the movie, he continued to find inappropriate places to insert Titanic references. Cover your eyes at the end of the show if you don't want to see the game's climax. 1997 certainly climaxed with Titanic. It's official. Titanic is the highest grossing film of all time, inflation notwithstanding. <laughs> the game's dorky preteen character is about as easy to steer as it is to keep the Titanic from sinking. It's good to know George Wood remained as weird as ever to the very end. <laughs> While Flights of Fantasy did actual movie reviews, a good proportion of their film coverage actually climaxed? consisted of playing production oh, I know. videos. Straight from I know, I know, I know. Listen. I heard Climax as well, but I tried my best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I same, tried my best. And spoilers, it sinks. <gasps> <gasps> I feel like I got a time amount for that, Zach. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> the studio with little to no commentary. It's filler, plain and simple. Oh. 
When one watches an episode of Flights of Fantasy, one can't help but be astonished with regards to how much filler is in each show. Outside of the film production videos I just mentioned, the show would often play cutscenes from the games they review, again completely for, unedited uh, and without anyways, commentary. Mac. Many of these cutscenes would be the endings of the games, rendering them spoiled for oh. any poor viewer who happens to <laughs> actually be interested in the games being discussed. Every episode is that one donkey video. On top of that, the <laughs> amount of segments that are They're straight like up recycled from previous episodes is similarly mm -hmm. astonishing. This can best be seen in their coverage of Goldeneye, both the movie Personally, and the game. I don't give a shit about the movie's being released on video? Play the review so, again. The game's coming out? You get Play the review again. The game's in the news yeah. for some reason? Play the review again. And throw in Tina Turner's music video, because why the hell not? Huh? All this filler made it seem like the crew just didn't huh? care about what they were doing, and maybe question how long they would continue the show. Sure enough, by the end of the millennium, Flights of Fantasy as we knew it came to an end. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, that was... George Wood is very, very strange, everybody. Yes, he is. Just as... He, listen, as someone with ADHD, okay, I identify <laughs> with his hyperfixations, all right? Mm -hmm. Like, if mm -hmm. you get me started on wrestling, for example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, the caddy videos right here. Uh, but yeah, like, if you get me started on something I'm super, super, super passionate about, I will not show up about it, ever. <laughs> also, yeah, Vine Sauce, I fucking love Vinny. He's, <laughs> he is... He's one of my biggest inspirations, along with uh, Joel. So yeah, he is in my regular rotation, and I often have him playing out there in the in the uh, living room. So yeah, uh, but yeah, I identify with it, but also it's just really, really strange, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just so strange because because it feels, it just feels like he has no reviewing skills at all, you know. <laughs> nope. Like. It, whether it's him or what's his face writing it, Mike Groves or whatever his name was, and and t what t Tom Allen <laughs> and Tim and Tim Allen, uh, uh writing <laughs> writing the fucking script. Step on up and see if you can throw a giant gold ring around a long boy's neck, ladies and gentlemen. Step on up, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hurry! Oh, ah. oh you missed. Or maybe you didn't. You owe me ten bucks either way. You better cough it up, Jay. <laughs> you got until Monday. Anyways, uh, but yeah, Our uh, whoever wrote it, it ultimately doesn't matter because what it comes out to, because what it ultimately comes out to, are reviews that are barely comprehensible. You have no nope. clue what exactly George or whoever wrote the script actually thinks about the game. You only know two things. One, they love Nintendo to the point of <laughs> to the point of me being glad that they aren't on Twitter in 2023. And yeah. Two, they want they want every game to essentially be the last of us. <laughs> Yeah, you know, interactive movie. <laughs> and I will say, I want to, I, I want to say this as a brief aside. Personally, I do not think that like all of Sony's output is movie games. I feel like mm -hmm. if you actually take a look at their studios, like like Santa Monica and Sucker Punch and uh, Gorilla, you'll find that like a lot of them, yeah, like focus a lot on story, but a lot of them also have really good world design and combat mechanics and stuff like that. It's mostly Naughty Dog, but George would cream himself over fucking Uncharted and The Last of Us and whatever else Naughty Dog is making now, <laughs> because uh -huh. that's what he because that's what he makes, or rather, rather because that's basically what he wants. He wants games to be movies, and games aren't movies; they're games. <laughs> so, yep. which. Which is not to say that games can't have, you know, film-esque stories. A lot of them have really, really great stories that would work well as movies or TV shows, and we see that. 
You know? Dude, 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 do you think George would be a big fan of visual novels? <laughs> oh, he would fucking just lose it over Dang and Rampa. Yeah, <laughs> or Ace Attorney. <laughs> Either that or like he would be like, they're just still images. <laughs> I'm game ending myself. I hate text. Uh, <laughs> Like, they know what reviewers say, but they don't have the skills to understand why. A lot of it comes down to writing, you know? A lot of it comes mm -hmm. down to writing. If you aren't a good writer, then chances are you're not a good reviewer either. But in 2023, personally, I don't really care as long as you're entertaining. And George Wood is entertaining, if anything else, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why, in my opinion, he's one of the greatest reviewers of all time. <laughs> to, 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 to think to start the thing to start out as to mainly focus on comic books <laughs> yeah i know Ugh. what would he think of the final cut scene from from metal gear solid that's three and a half hours long wait what oh yeah <laughs> yeah Is that no meme no meme no, no, no meme no meme <laughs> what <laughs> it's longer than endgame <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. I'm not your song for is mostly cutscene. <laughs> so I have a line and it's there. Okay. <laughs> when your cutscene is longer than endgame, in my opinion, it's time to stop. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, three hour long cutscene. Nah, I'm good. Exactly. Like, listen, I fucking love role playing games. You know, I'm playing. Mm -hmm. Playing Fire Emblem on here. That's that's a lot of like text and, and conversations and stuff like that. I love that mm -hmm. shit. But not one of them is over three hours. So <laughs> yeah. Anyways. What's this have, what's this what's this description read? <laughs> we have another part to get through, chat. Average metal gear cut scene. I would probably not enjoy Kojima games then. George Wood and his show Gaming in the Clinton Years may be the most infamous series of video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part two of this, rather, part two of this two part documentary covered the years 2000 to the present. We are jumping so far ahead, chat. Mm -hmm. Here, you'll see George Wood ask random girls at the mall creepy sexual questions, bring down a local TV station, concoct multiple fake cruises. Coerce multiple award-winning celebrities to participate in painfully unfunny skits and fake his own death. <laughs> huh? <laughs> That's an escalation. Yeah. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> okay. It, get, it gets more weirder than part one. <laughs> anything. It gets it gets more weird than any than any of the game reviews. <laughs> That's only the tip of the iceberg that the fucking Titanic crashed into, chat. See, I can make Titanic jokes, too! Yeah! yeah. Fuck you, George. I'm gonna go get some water before we get going. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's getting water. Step on up and see if you can throw a giant gold ring around a long boy's neck, ladies and gentlemen. Step on up. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hurry. Ah, oh. oh, you missed. Or maybe you didn't. Ah, uh, yeah, missed. Way. Yeah, missed. Cough up the money. <laughs> so tell me, chat. Did so, it so, so, nope, it did not hit. Ah, uh, man, Jay, you're just owing me your whole rent this month, huh? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I look at it like no, no, no cap. That is actually the tip of the iceberg. It gets even more weirder. <laughs> God, who all is still here to experience that with us? By the way, <laughs> because. I'm going to try to not stop as much during this because this is because this is uncharted territory for me. I don't know what we're getting into, chat. 
<laughs> so if you're still here with us for this, let me know. I'm fucking ready. Okay, we got Lavender here with us. We got Jay here with us. I know that much. I know we have Mech here for now. Uh, we have Aish here with us too. I think. Yes. According to Twitch chat. Down the goddamn rabbit hole. Let's go. Let's yeah. go, chat. First, I need water. Wait, didn't you already get water? <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking water right now. Water. Make sure that you're drinking. Drinking? Drinking, Josh. <laughs> make, make sure that you're drinking water too, chat. It was the end of a millennium. A time of death. A time of rebirth. But with the death of Flights of Fantasy, a new show was born. And they called okay, it geez, FOFTV.com. The show didn't disappear entirely right away. It was rebranded as FOFTV.com. And was I know I just said what I said, but this <laughs> Oh, I, I, get, I, get, I get a little disinformation. You would be blown away by uh, how revolutionary <laughs> Flights of Fantasy was. Leon! It was hosted primarily on their website. That's significant because that would make the show among the first video game related program transmitted via the internet. Only one episode survived. There's nothing <laughs> like a cool, refreshing sip of water practically by impossible. Nestle Water. However, it feels very much the Don't same as Nestle the, shows. Water. the major terrible. difference being the reviews are much shorter, with a greater number of them being crammed into each episode. No worries, though. That's why I hate They're the still Nestle, as bad as ever. Rather Wendy's game you can't beat a game that offers this many options. Oh, this! We had a lot of fun creating three fat black ladies fighting know. one skinny stop, white turd. Stop, stop. This is the oh. game that killed the Beanie Babies. Now America's youth is obsessed with Pikachu. Oh, by the way, if Square doesn't add voiceovers to Final Fantasy IX, I'm committing suicide. To supplement these short video reviews, their website contain a massive compendium of written reviews. These are mostly available wow. to you to read using the Internet Wayback Machine. And anyone who loves yep. Georgewood is encouraged to check them out. They're written in the exact same voice as the reviews on the show, and reading them aloud while doing your worst Georgewood impression is always fun. Final Fantasy IX is no match for Final Fantasy VIII in terms of characters, cinematic quality, music, and emotion. <laughs> However, this old-school <laughs> revamp completely trumps its predecessor in terms of... New stream idea... You're right, dude. You and I, <laughs> yeah. a simpatico mind meld, dude. Yeah, we gotta do this. We get on read these written reviews on stream. <laughs> we gotta fucking do this. You know what? Hold on, Zach. I want you to pull up the Wayback Machine, and I want you to put like the text of one of these reviews into a story pacing and clarity. FOFTV.com okay. was off the that. air by September of 2000. In an interview found on Gazette.net, Tom Allen admitted that Flights of Fantasy was too time-consuming to edit, and that he wanted to focus on creating content that was easier to make. That content would begin airing immediately after Flights of Fantasy ended, and it continued to be tangentially about video games, including one segment that is I mean, if you're working mostly by, by far yourself, I the most really baffling, uncomfortable thing that George Boyd mm -hmm. and his crew has ever made. Oh, wait. Entitled, My Fish Talks to Me, the video is oh, attempting no. to capitalize on the release of Seaman, which had just been released uh. from the Dreamcast. It's a fake documentary, and you can tell by the self-deprecating humor that it wasn't intended to be taken this old guy came up to me and started talking to me about Seaman. There's so many perverts these days. That being said, using self-deprecating humor does not shield one's responsibility in producing terrible content, and regardless of how seriously they intended to be taken, they still thought it was a good idea to go to a mall, approach complete strangers, and ask them this. Excuse me, we need some people for a project that we're doing. Have you ever played with Seaman? It's a new video game. Seaman, have you heard of it? No? Okay, thanks. It's speared. It's just speared. It hurts so bad, chat. It hurts so bad. No, George should not be allowed in public. Just try watching this entire video without cringing. <laughs> Is that a challenge, chat? Hold on. Oh, uh. 
Oh, uh, yeah, Logan, uh, about that. <laughs> if you can't do it now, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the video you're trying to look up. It's right here. Oh, yeah. Hey, the George Wood Archive. That's on standby, chat. It is not possible. Well, Their other like content was night. nowhere near this creepy, but it was that just is as bad. most of my weekdays now. It was a show called Who Wants to Be a Contestant? an obvious parody of ABC's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which was at the height of its popularity at the time. The show borrows the basic format, lifelines, and catchphrases of Millionaire, but the questions are almost entirely based around video games and movies. Winners received a free video game, and the list of games given away as prizes are actually impressive. They included the oh, yes! Logan. Vagrant Story, and I found, 3. I found 2001 archives, Nintendo GameCube reviews. <laughs> GameCube reviews? Like Pikmin 1. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't... Listen. Listen. Listen, Pikmin is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm not... <laughs> I'm going to read that actually impressive. Chat. They included The Legend of Dragoon, <laughs> Vagrant Story, and Final Fantasy III, Discord? to name just a few. Just to DM it to me. Tom Allen okay. described the game as millionaire on acid, but watching the number of surviving yeah. episodes, it isn't anywhere as weird as That's his description would seem to suggest. What is the sequel to Parappa the Rapper? Hum Jammer Bammy, Boom Jammer Lammy, Fun Jammer Flanny, or Lamb Jammer Panty? In the proud tradition of public access huh? programming, it's more low budget and desperate than anything else. However, they did produce a number of special themed episodes that were, in the proud tradition of Flights of Fantasy, bizarre and uncomfortable. Those of you who were alive at the time may remember the saga of Elian Gonzalez, the little Cuban boy who was forcibly taken from his relative's care in Miami to be reunited with his I father not in know Cuba. About this. That debacle must have made quite an impression on George Wood and Tom Allen, because one episode was called, Who Wants to Go Back to Cuba? Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it all down. <laughs> and featured the winners being raided by fake immigration agents as their prize. Another episode huh? was called, I kid you not, Who Wants to See My Derriere? Because, you know, derriere kind of rhymes with millionaire and that's funny and stuff. Anyway, the winner of those episodes gets to go behind a curtain where George Wood shows them his ass. <laughs> I'm just whatever well, guess if I if I ever get to this point chat <laughs> I want you to cancel me by all accounts the show was actually popular with Bowie residents here, look at my ass, stares and nods. It's a two out of five, and I want my money back. Everyone from senior citizens to teenagers wanted to be on the show. From that, it seemed like the show was set to become a long-running success for Wood and Allen. However, the show would end the very next year, with Tom Allen becoming anathema to most of the staff of BCTV. Oh, I this story. What? In 2001, BCTV's City Hall-based studio was undergoing an extensive renovation. During that time, the city of Bowie stepped in and seized control of the studio. That decision, according to reports archived on thegazette.net, was at least partially due to the influence of two former BCTV employees, Jim Travland and Tom Allen. The reports allege that Allen sent a number of threatening emails about BCTV executive director Sandy Bellino. The content of the threat was not made public. However, Allen would later claim in an email conversation with a city employee, I found an embarrassing personal email written at 6 in the morning involving a ridiculous discussion over sodas. I might as well explain this one right now in case Sandy whips it out to prove mental problems. Bellino fired Allen from the station after that incident. She claimed it was the only serious workplace incident from her 15-year tenure at BCTV. Around the same time, Allen was in email correspondence with Denise Mahoney, a city liaison to BCTV. 
where he discussed gossip about his- Dude, kid, are you telling me that this high school- Okay, so, <laughs> probably at this point he was, like, in his 20s, right? Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> at this point he was, like, in his 20s. Uh, probably, maybe, yeah, maybe, like, late 20s at this point. Who would have imagined that this would have escalated into such a thing? Former BCTV cohorts, mm -hmm. focusing extensively on Bellino. Like getting in his in emails, with like Ellen calls Bellino a like compulsive liar and says her management practices are ineffective and unethical. He suggests that Bellino may be spending too much money on items that aren't tax exempt, and he complains that Bellino should be paying him at a higher rate for certain work. He also wrote about the hours Bellino worked at the office. Three to five hours a day. Must be nice. Someone should be keeping tabs on her in and out times over an extended period of time. Those emails, it was alleged, were an integral part of the city's decision to take over the studio. This became an ongoing controversy. An internal memo by the city regarding the ongoing management of the station became a point of conflict, with BCTV taking the station to court to make it public. BCTV Did won no the suit this guy and found in? the memo arguing that possible violence could occur at the station because of lack of supervision. The city of Bowie cut funding to BCTV as a result, and the station was shut down entirely in August of 2002. In response, former BCTV employees filed a $1.2 million suit against the city, but it was thrown out in court. The station would eventually be reborn as the Bowie Community Media Corporation, or BCMC, but city officials publicly discouraged former BCTV employees from applying, saying their applications would not be heavily considered. So Tom Allen was, in some way, directly responsible in the downfall of the TV station that hosted Flights of Fantasy for so long. Why did he do it? <laughs> BCTV producer Anetta Green theorizes that he's doing this to get back at Sandy because he wants his own studio. He's just brazen enough to do it. Wait. Hold on. This video is in 3.8 and 3.60? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh boy. It really is just like an episode of Game To get in back at years. Sandy yeah. because he wants his own studio. He's just brazen enough to do it, chat. and the city is stupid enough to play into his hands. It seems to have worked. Tom has been a studio tech specialist working for the city of Bowie since 2001. Wow. <laughs> so he was yeah. able to get away with this scot-free. Damn. It's interesting that in all the drama that played out over BCTV's fate, George Wood's name wasn't mentioned once. Because of that, it's unknown what role, if any, he played in the events. Okay, what? Hold on. What is this? What is this? <laughs> what is this look? What is what is this line, Chad? <laughs> hold on. Okay, good. It's it is but a part of the video. But why is it a part of the video? Why? <laughs> What we do know is that around that same time, he was off starting another project. Oh boy. On January 4th, 2001, Navigator, the National Academy of Video Game Testers and Reviewers, was incorporated, and they've been giving out awards for achievement in video games since then. Some have been skeptical regarding the awards, the claiming that nominees Navigator. have to pay to nominate games, and winners have to pay to receive their awards. But everything I've seen demonstrates their legitimacy. They've appeared at big name events like the Penny Arcade Expo, and have gotten voice acting heavyweights like Richard Epcar to speak on their behalf. I'm Richard Epcar. I'm standing in for the president of the Academy uh, because we don't have enough actors taking the glory away from the game developers in this industry. George Wood, of course, can't run an organization like Navigator alone. An archived version of their website from 2003 preserves this quote from their executive director. Dedicated members of the industry and members of the press are stepping forward to recognize the video game achievements that you don't hear about on the Evening News' entertainment report. Our mission is to bring awareness to this industry so that the public understands the limitless artistry that can come from this interactive medium. Video games are an art form, and our unique award categories reflect just how far that art has come. That executive director is none other than Tom Allen. It's reassuring to know that even if his shenanigans at BCTV hadn't ended in his favor, he'd still have a job, thanks to George Wood. <laughs> what the fuck? I know, right? <laughs> this is... What? Like I, said, like I said, shit gets weird, doesn't it? 
he's just moving this guy around yeah. <laughs> from company to company. What what is exactly the relation between Thomas Allen and George Wood? Does he have does does fucking Tom Allen have like beef like dirt on freaking George Wood and like and fucking George just doesn't want it out and and that's like, why he just keeps installing him in these positions. The like, George, are you all right? Is he blackmailing you? <laughs> I was about to say, is this is is this a cry for help, George? <laughs> now, concerning the actual awards themselves, we actually have footage of two ceremonies that are publicly available: oh. the 2004 huh? and 2005 awards. Both ceremonies feature Wood as MC, along with another man named Don Risher. Information on Richard George showed his ass to the wrong video guy. demonstrates that he and Wood were acquainted in 2000 when Wood was still hosting his game show on BCTV. If anyone was worried that he would lose his touch after Flights of Fantasy, have no fear. Both him and Risher are so very awkward. I know many of you out there used to be able to make your favorite video game character jump, fire a weapon, and even score chicks so you don't have to. But I'm not your favorite video game character. And tonight, these guys and girls are getting the night off. As if directed by Peter Jackson. It's so smelly, Zach. <laughs> uh -huh. oh. I got, got to know they haven't lost their touch. <laughs> it's, it's rancid. <laughs> it's the boy is a time bomb chat. The game featured the brutal slaughtering of mindless blue orcs. The genocidal what? drowning of hundreds of blood red uruk -hai. Actually, in truth, the game has nothing to do with the Lord of the Rings. Great to see that the inappropriate analogies and awkward stage presence haven't gone anywhere. Aside from that, <laughs> no, I know, the they just they haven't typical. improved in 10 years. In the 10 years since then, they haven't improved a single stage bit. And an unnamed female announcer reading the nominations. Pretty down to earth for something George Wood is involved in. Although they did try to spice things up in the 2005 ceremony with predictable in, although they did try to spice things up in the 2005 ceremony with predictable last results. Year. What the heck are they doing? It looks Sorry, like a mating dance or something. Here Sex oh, no, in a kids game. Uh oh. Actually, Don, what award show would be complete without a sex montage? The Oscars have the broke back cowboy montage. And we have our broke back pandas. Well, aren't you the busy little beaver? Let the mating begin. Oh, that feels good. Oh yeah! Imagine this going on ah! for five minutes. Anyway, later in the five show, minutes. Wood shows a quote hilarious ah! unquote fan-made video by Harold Rodriguez. So not only is the video not that funny, but why the hell did they think it was a good idea to essentially point the camera at the screen and film like this was their Sonic the Hedgehog review all over again? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. The Bruh. sex montage. Chat? Uh, I love how they haven't changed one bit. <laughs> no, if anything, they just got more awkward, ch chat. <laughs> Zach, they just got more awkward because at no point in gaming in the Clinton years did you have George showing <laughs> sex scenes uh -huh. from, from like, the popular games, you know? I mean, they've already shown that they can cut away to other footage in this same video. Why don't they do it here when they need to do it the most? Anyway, the next year, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is when Wood created Navigator's YouTube account and began posting the Gaming in the Clinton Years videos. But, as I also mentioned, their method of posting these videos made their context far from clear for most people who watch them. So let's go back to that terse description left on their playlist. In the fucking as you may recall, it says man. that the opinions expressed yeah. in Gaming in the Clinton Years don't represent those of Navigator, instead expressing the original third-party 90s writers. When these videos were posted, the descriptions made it seem like Navigator found these videos in some sort of vault, got control of them, and posted them on YouTube for the sake of posterity. 
Of mm. course, the story's nonsense since Navigator was run by George Wood and Tom Allen. So what's the real story mm. here? In the episode of the Wealthy Speaker Show featuring Wood and Allen, they explain George that did all this. I know. Basically a gimmicky it's just way him. To repackage old content, Everything is George Wood. And that it was Jack. primarily a marketing thing. It appears as though the two men saw the humor in the videos and decided that posting them on the internet would be a good way to bring attention to Navigator. While I appreciate the fact that they seem to see the absurdity in their old content, the fact that they concocted this counter-narrative where Navigator found and posted the tapes betrays a greater, ingrown sense of embarrassment. It was me, Austin. Thing. It was the same George time, all along, Austin. This kind of self-deprecating Austin. humor is less than oh, effective son of a if bitch. the content they're creating now is barely of a higher quality than what they were doing in the 90s. Regardless, Oof. they were right in that the videos did manage to bring a lot of attention to Navigator, but I'm not sure how successful they were in the long run. I mean, most people That's know sad. Navigator I mean, like, is the channel that posts gaming in the Clinton years, while well, know nothing whatsoever about the awards that they give out. Indeed, this comment mm. from Thonaros sums up the attitudes of more than <laughs> a fair amount of viewers. What the fuck happened to this channel? <laughs> While confusion continued to mount around Navigator, little was anyone Spell aware that George Wood was hard at work creating another company, Avatoy. The name, according to the wealthy speaker, I was about to say, like, we've seen this. <laughs> we see this after every single video chat, but we mm-hmm. don't even know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Uh, uh-huh. but I guess we're about to figure it out. Another company, Avatoy. The name, according to the Wealthy Speaker Show, is a multi-level pun meant to reference both the word avatar as well as a cockney way of saying have a toy, like have a toy. I know, it's hilarious. As their very primitive website describes, Avatoy is a private, four-stock corporation working closely with other portfolio companies to create strategic alliances and compelling, live, location-based, interactive special entertainment events with high publicity value for clients, charities, partners, and sponsors. Basically, they plan events with the goal- What the- this is- this is a bunch of words, chat. (laughs) Yep. This is a bunch of words. Just say that you are- just say that you're a company that helps plan events. Because this mm-hmm. means nothing. To quote Wood's appearance on the Wealthy Speaker Show, being to prove to the public no that gaming is not a four-letter exactly. word. The big event Avatoy seems to have focused on was a massive video game and navigator-themed cruise, set to take place in November of 2008. This fucking... <laughs> 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 this fucking... This... This, this, this banner chat. <laughs> this is some real graphic design. Yeah, exactly. Graphic design is my fucking passion right here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> the cruise was set to be an impressive number of. Who? Who is this woman? Who is she? Yeah, you'll chat? find out. You'll very shortly find out who okay. she is. Set to take place in November of 2008, the cruise was set to feature an impressive number of guests, including the Hardcore Granny and a performance by Video Games Live. Most interestingly, the guest of honor was to be Cloris Leachman, the legendary <clears throat> actress who's been in everything from the Mary Tyler Moore show to Malcolm in the Middle to Scary Movie 4. The schedule is still on their website, and it features a number of contests for games like Guitar Hero and Brain Age, tryouts for the Wii, huh? and a game show hosted by Cloris Leachman herself. This all sounds very impressive, but here's the thing. I don't think this cruise ever happened. If you do a Google search, you can find old press releases everywhere from Game Sutra to IGN, but there's absolutely no indication that it actually took place. Even if you look at the archive of live performances for Video Games Live, there's no record of them having a performance on the dates given during the cruise. And what about Cloris Leachman? That's the weirdest thing about this whole story. It does seem that Avatoy got in contact with Leachman at some point. This can be proven by going on Avatoy's YouTube channel, Avatoy Media. The channel seems to have unlisted their videos. If you search Avatoy, it doesn't bring anything up. And even doing a search for Avatoy Media only brings up one result. And tellingly, it's a compilation of Gaming the Clinton years videos. Only four people are currently subscribed to the channel, myself being one of them, of course, 
and their only videos are contained within a series of bizarrely titled playlists. One of them, called Embargo Order, features video of Leechman and Wood playing games on the Wii. So they obviously know each other, but was this taken on the cruise? The video was published in 2010, two years after the cruise was supposed to have taken place, so that tells us nothing. That leads me to conclude that, as legitimate as it may have seemed at the time, there's no actual proof that the Navigator cruise ever happened. I know, it's bizarre, but until someone finds me evidence proving the contrary, I'm going to continue to believe that it's all fiction. That out of this, this is, this is my biggest, this is, this is my biggest piece of, piece of evidence, I guess, that this has to be just a giant money embezzlement scam. <laughs> like, like, George Wood has to just be some kind of scam artist, dude, because this <laughs> is insane. No, no, no tickets ever went up on sale. <laughs> thing i guess <laughs> i guess we're watching gitsy now chat oh we are yeah because someone because someone redeemed it Hold on. Oh, oh. okay you've just spent over 200 dollars on the nintendo 64 and the new mario game oh, you pop mario, it in stretch <laughs> mario's face <laughs> just for fun <laughs> then listen to princess <laughs> toadstool <laughs> invite you to the castle and watch the Gitsy. lack of cloud fly around with his camera you arrive via two. Remember, you're a plumber. Yes. It's your first time in this brand new world. And what a world it is. What a world you it is, You can climb chat. trees and do yes. huge flips out of them. You can head towards the waterfall and listen as it gets louder and louder. Yes. You can jump over the fence and swim around in the <laughs> yeah. moat. Just try not to get caught up in the force of the waterfall. In Super Mario 64, you can do just about anything. It, it is, is, in fact, fact like, like jumping, jumping into, into the, the movie, movie Toy, Toy Story. Story. But don't get all psyched <laughs> up about traveling to infinity and beyond just yet. Although the gameplay and graphics are very cinematic, the basic setup and plot of the game is no big surprise. <laughs> Thanks for the After advice, a few days George. Of playing the game, it starts to get old. <laughs> the game is way too short, only 15 main levels. Most players will beat the game in less than two weeks, unless they plan on getting George is all rich because he's been laundering money for years. That it has to be just like, like Avatoy has everywhere. to be just some, some of sort of like weird multi-level marketing scheme. Like the one in stage two that can only it has to just be a way for him to launder money. And breaking off the corner of a wall. And hiring his There's fucking cronies, <laughs> like friggin' Tom Allen. But if you use wall jumps near the Boulder Hall, you'll discover it in no time. The game would be better if we were treated with plot developments and cinema scenes just like the kind we get at the end of the game. Vince McMahon. <laughs> Mario 64 has the best ending ceremony oh, of God. any game in history. It's just outstanding. God. The super graphics, but just like imagine if like Vince McMahon wasn't as big of an asshole. Don't get us wrong. And then imagine that he's just a massive like for you to buy this, this enigmatic game. But weirdo. we just wanted to get the negative. I love how you've been shouting this whole time. Now, here's what's great about the game. First of all, the game it needs to stop being shocking, Zach. To to <laughs> angles, you can use because it's just continuously just, just weirdness on top of weirdness. The same computers that brought you know? You special effects in Jurassic Park, Twister, Independence Day, and of course, Toy Story. The significance oh, of this dude. is that video games are becoming so advanced and so popular that they're starting to gain Hollywood's attention. Although we've carped on a few of Mario's shortcomings, Please be aware that this is only because of the enormously high expectations that have accompanied the game and the development of Nintendo 64 for years. The game does get fun again after you beat it, and then focus on finding 120 stars. Since you're familiar with all of the It's so devices, weird that he just says like finding finding all the stars is a chore, and then he's like the end game is great because you can find all 120 stars. <laughs> I know, right? Was that so me? what is it? One last thing we should mention is prices. Nintendo 64 games will be, on average, $10 to $15 more expensive than Super Nintendo games. This means that most games may cost around $70, compared to I can't to believe that we've just gone back to those prices, chat. Although mm -hmm. like, that no Nintendo one is, like, upset about that at all. Rivals when all is said and done. Well -established and emerging systems Despite, like, like games being not as advanced, or rather, like, like, games but not as taking as large of a leap forward as, like, 16 bit different the gaming game from, uh, will surely change. From uh, that we to 64 We all want the best bit. games there are. We all want games that give Hollywood a run for its money. 
But how much are we willing to pay for these great software titles? Maybe for these great as video software games become titles, more mainstream, Zach. companies oh, okay. will be able to afford to lower their software prices in an effort to attract even more buyers. Now that's virtual reality. It's give, dude. George, George Wood gives me brain worms. <laughs> All I see is George Wood and his weird, his weird maw. I don't know. By the way, let's take a minute to appreciate some of the videos from Avatoy's YouTube page. Though they were all posted oh in the early 2010s, they were filmed years He looks like... He looks like a conservative politician. It has not been kind to him. <laughs> no, it hasn't. ...years earlier, and helped to fill in the gaps concerning what else George was up to in the mid to late 2000s. He definitely 2000s. looks like your granddad. One of the playlists, called Toying Around, is an archive of a game show of the same name hosted by Wood in 2005. This shows that Wood and Allen somehow made it back onto booing public access even screen. after Tom Allen's controversy earlier in the decade. Toying Around is much <laughs> more basic than their previous game show. Contestants gather around a bell and write a series of related words or phrases by Wood. Nothing beats it. Whoever can buzz in first and name the common thread you, tying all the words together gets a point. Whoever gets the most points gets rewarded by playing a game on the iToy. The rest of the videos on Avatoy's YouTube Ew. consists of short videos of people playing high toy games and more videos of Cloris Leachman, Ew. including this bizarre parody of Geico commercials. George Wood is not a celebrity, so we hired one to help him tell his story. Last night, I came home totally exhausted from a long tennis match. My wife complained I never why get is, sweaty Why is he pitched her. up? <laughs> All right. Hey! I'm so turned on ball so fast. <laughs> I, lo I, because love, the videos are I, I love how this is what Dean is rating into. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. This has been a trip. <laughs> we are watching the history of gaming in the Clinton years. Ow. And we're, <laughs> and we're partway through this the did, second These bizarre part escapades Ow. from George Wood and company have, until now, been buried for most people. However, there was enough insanity going on Hello, and Mario. Main thing to keep viewers captivated for years. Oh. How are you doing? On June 20th, 2009, Ow. Navigator posted a video called Bloopers before the inevitable Let's Pray commentary. This shows that Navigator was well Step aware of the reaction to the videos you can throw a giant gold ring around a long let's boy's neck, ladies and gentlemen. Step on up. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hurry. Ah! Oh, you the 2% didn't round out didn't. in your favor this you time, dude. Oh. I'm sorry. Rigged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. Navigator posted Not a video again. called Bloopers Here before the inevitable Let's Pray commentary. This shows that Navigator was well aware of the reaction their videos were receiving. The video itself features a disheveled Don Hello, Mario. wearing what seems to be a bad Tommy Wiseau right. wig, saying a bunch of bizarre things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, if you, if you, 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 Hello, Mario. He's saying a bunch of bizarre things. Okay, so just some normal stuff for them. Okay. <laughs> yes, folks, okay, there is a Wii and we Apparently Dean raided again. To call these scenes bloopers isn't really accurate, since they're not technically outtakes well, thank of anything. You for the second it's more of a behind-the-scenes video. But no video on Navigator's channel corresponded whatsoever to its contents. It would this take a month and a half before was any sort of answers could be gleaned. On August 5th, so much Navigator posted twice. their next video, titled Tribute to George Wood, and it's easily in the running oh, for the most bizarre thing that that channel has ever done. It features Wood, behind a green screen, wearing a tuxedo and sporting ludicrously pink dyed hair, playing with a Wiimote. He then bursts out into this. Good evening, I'm George Wood. Or, are you watching in the morning? If so, that makes me your morning Wood, with an overactive Wii. <laughs> I've half a mind to end the stream, chat. <laughs> I've half a mind to end the fucking stream. <laughs> Marking that and I'm sending it to fucking Bunster and I'm saying you're making a highlight out of this. Let's make a highlight out of pink haired George Wood saying I'm your morning wood. I'm sending it to him.
<laughs> that made you mean, cringe so hard. That's just horrifying. Right <laughs> but it does conclusively put <laughs> the pocket conversation from the previous video in context, all things considered. Much of the video features Wood rehearsing what appears to be material for an upcoming navigator. Who's just broken? Can we get a replacement? dropping a huge bombshell. A message simply I don't reading, think he's broken. I just think this was how he was designed. 1955-2006. Yes, Navigator had revealed that George Wood, the man the internet loved to hate, had been dead since 2006. Three years before the video was posted and the same year they had begun uploading gaming in the Clinton years. Now, as should be more than clear from watching this video, George wasn't dead. To give a few examples, we've constantly been referring to an interview he did for the Wealthy Speaker Show, which was recorded in 2008. There's also Avatoy, which began most of its activity after Wood's supposed death. But these resources weren't, and still aren't, easily accessible, and so most people thought that his death Whoops. was legitimate. However, Whoops, a sizable segment of Navigator Jeez. viewers were skeptical, and it didn't take long for the community to find proof that the death claims were nonsensical. The video passed around the internet as proof was an excerpt of a political-themed BCMC talk show where Wood appeared as a guest, talking about the recent inauguration of President Barack Obama, which of course happened in 2009. Even with Wood's death now easily refuted, Navigator kept running with it for an embarrassingly long time. They posted a tribute song. Goodbye, George Wood. Well, you just a puppet over me. You always said you lost your way, but you never lost your fight. <laughs> what the fuck is this? It's this man's deal. Then they posted a series of videos where his body, which was really just a cheap puppet, is exhumed from the grave, takes a shower, and is beaten senseless by a little kid. All this weirdness culminated in, and you are not going to believe this, another cruise. In 2010, Navigator announced C3 at Sea, a cruise scheduled for October another one through November 3rd, yeah. 2011. C3 stands for Cosplay Caucus Cruise. The cruise was explicitly both video game and cosplay themed, and the press release advertised a massive cosplay competition, as well as Navigator's Game of the Decade ceremony. The press release also described a, quote, roast of infamous Gaming in the Clinton Years narrator George Wood, whose friends and family will reflect on the surprising endurance of his much-debated work, unquote. In addition to the George Wood roast, if one watches the trailer video, it's implied that his ghost is going to be haunting the ship. Again, there's no proof that this cruise, like the last one, ever happened. In this instance, it's not hard to conclude the C3 was a hoax. The press release says that $100 from every ticket sold would be donated to Susan G. Komen for the Cure, a well-known breast cancer uh -oh. awareness group. Breast cancer, of course, uh -oh. being the disease that George Wood wished IDOS would give to Lara Croft in Tomb Raider 3. What may It all comes back to that. Yep, it does. <laughs> Are you... <f> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. You're flabbergasted, aren't you, dude? Yeah. This has to be a giant scam. <laughs> it just has to be something that George is making up so that he can make some money without actually making any money. <laughs> yes. This cannot be a real thing that happened. <laughs> this just has to be something that he made up. That way he can get some money. Dude. Like, literally at the beginning of this, I was like, this man feels like a walking Tim and Eric sketch. And these past few minutes have solidified that. Because especially <laughs> like with, like, the song and the puppet, that is something that, like, you would see on experimental live-action Adult Swim. You mm -hmm. know? You would see a puppet of the guy who they're saying is dead get risen up very very slowly out and then get beaten up by a little kid that's so weird yeah <laughs> but like i don't know it's just makes ugh. these crew stories even stranger <laughs> is that in august of 2017 
Navigator posted a news story on their website entitled Gamer Cruise Controversy. The story reads, quote, The Coalition has been reporting on controversy surrounding yeah. video game crews known as Gamer Tech Events, CruiseCon, and Gamer Gauntlet. Varying reports attribute booking systems such as Cvent, Eventbrite, and PayPal used to take unfulfilled orders rather than actual ticket sales, leading to a refunds investigation by an alleged ESPN contributor. Due to large upfront deposits and attrition schedules of charters, which usually require a travel agency to provide third-party booking rather than direct sales from the cruise line, a video game cruise would require substantial investment." Unquote. This seems like some sort of bizarre meta-commentary on their own actions, but for what end, I'm not entirely sure. In light of the evidence, George Wood's fake death, the cruise, and everything surrounding it seems to be, like posting gaming in the Clinton years, primarily a marketing thing. However, like with gaming in the Clinton years, I don't know how successful it's been. Most viewers don't seem to know or care about Navigator as an organization, and instead are primarily just fixated on George Wood and how bizarre their content is. And bizarre is what their content continued to be. Videos regarding C3 just... quietly stopped, and by 2012, several new Gaming in the Clinton Years related series appeared. The first was Retro Hate Mail. In this series, after playing a brief clip of one of Wood's reviews, an old man wearing a cheap crown calling himself Charles the Brit reads his actual viewer comments regarding the review in question. 40,000. The slow controls were terrible. You don't do research and you call yourself a journalist. Do your job. You should have just showed Tifa's front-loaded anvils like your contender over. review sure to make it better. <laughs> the second, much more ambitious series was Re-Re-Reviews. This was meant to be a countdown of the top 100 reviews from Gaming in the Clinton Years, and it was hosted, unbelievably, by Tom Sizemore, the actor famous for his roles in Natural Born Killers, Saving Private Ryan, and Black Hawk Down. No word what? on how Navigator got him to take part in this, <laughs> but as the Forrest Leachman videos prove, they know how to get it done. Riri Reviews has to be the <laughs> laziest and most disappointing series of videos ever posted on Navigators. How, 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 how do they get these people? <laughs> Who, what kind of connections does George Wood have? Because I'm honestly <laughs> scared to know him because I'm a, because because I'm afraid I'm gonna cross him, and he has like connections that will like come to my house and kill me. Uh -huh. What the fuck? Channel, though advertised as a countdown show, the videos in question are no more than the original Gaming in the Clinton Years segments played in their entirety. The reviews themselves take up only half the screen because Navigator felt the need to take up the entire other half of the screen, with the number of where it appears on the countdown. And what about Tom Sizemore? Though described as the host, he only appears at the very end of each video, often for less than 10 seconds, saying complete non sequiturs. Navigator, you suck. Dry balls. Thankfully, the videos didn't last. Only entries 100 through 90 ever appeared. <laughs> Aside from these series, a number of That's George so Wood related one off videos appeared from time to time. The funniest, in my opinion, oh. being Gaming in the Obama Years, a compilation of George Wood style reviews for modern games. Donkey Kong Country Returns. Good game, but we've been there, done that. Also, without Candy Kong sexy anvil, how are we supposed to be inspired to play this? Excite Truck. The only thing exciting about this is how I know Nintendo fans will probably grow up to be truck drivers. Fire Emblem. I don't know, man. I will say that, you know, it's very, very uninspired how they're, uh... Mm-hmm. It's very uninspired how they're shitting on Nintendo. Why are... Well, well, why aren't they, uh, why aren't they kissing the ground that they walk on, you know? Yeah, yeah, unrealistic, my immersion. It's very unrealistic, it's very, uh, it's sexy anvil, yeah. I saw gay porn of this once. Yep, that's huh? definitely gay. Another, much more obnoxious yes. video features Kyle Irvin, a marketing and PR specialist for Navigator, singing songs about wood. And my voice speaks on all behalf of all the few preview best teams out there. Just love their old Georgia Woody. All right, now let's get some of this old video gamer music. <laughs> His fake, obnoxious accent makes him exceedingly punchable. 
But of course, what viewers really wanted was the real George Wood. And in April of 2015, seemingly out of nowhere, oh, Navigator brought him back. Oh boy. <laughs> the video in question is called Official Resurrection of George it. Wood and features our favorite video game reviewer, now with a striking head of white hair, playing games while being berated by Man. Kyle Irvin, this time talking like the douchiest bro on the planet. George, all right, now you got, yeah, move, 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 now you got some control. Why are you trying to talk like, you like that? Why is he he's trying to talk like, no! Yeah. The mushrooms are not your friends. I know oh, that back home, choice. shrooms are friendly, yeah. and you go out and pick them in your garden, but these shrooms are evil. Oh, okay. Evil little bastards. They don't get you high. Again, there's little context here, but it seems like Irvin is trying this to is be like... This like... repulsively bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is very, uh... This is very, like, just not... It's not bad in the way that's, like, fun, you know? Mm -hmm. I would not watch this recreationally. Duke Nukem. And his bizarre spectacle comes to a head during a segment where he laments that he's no longer allowed to make dick jokes because of Gamergate? and all this juvenile boyish crap can't release this video in the American market with all the Gamergate Whoa. Uh, awareness. Whoa. It's not just does, sexism, it's... What? Does this Gamergate mean I can never tell a dick joke again? You can't do it. It's obvious that this isn't meant to be taken seriously, but what is the overall point he's trying to make here? Again, we're all left just confused and baffled. <laughs> God. I'm just... <laughs> Why? I'm just like... Man. It's like, I feel, I feel, I feel bad. You know? I feel bad, mm -hmm. chat. Irvin, unfortunately, bad. makes his mark on nearly all the new George Wood-themed videos, and his presence Hell. nearly brings them down entirely. One of your biggest fans, I've got some interview questions for you today. And first off, I'd like to ask you, what do you have such a raging heart on for Donkey Kong Country? Why don't you talk? At the time, I George, was... why are you talking up a review one minute and then bashing it the next? Seriously, stop talking for one goddamn second and let George have the floor. I have to say, Jesus Christ, I hate this mm -hmm. guy. I hate him. Yeah, seriously. I hate this dude. As of this writing, the last video featuring George Wood is a nearly 30 minute epic called Make Your Own George Wood Review. Here, George says a number of Gaming in the Clinton Years related words with the hope it really sucks. of people combining yeah. them together to make their own review. Animals. Like it is an animal. Animals. Annoying. Annoying. Apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. Arsehole. Arsehole. Ass. Ass. Asshole. <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is cringe. <laughs> yeah, what's the cringe? Dude wanted people to make YouTube poops of him. Yeah, I know, right? God, like, I don't, like, this is actually just cringe. This mm -hmm. is, this is very cringe right here. Asshole. To the best of my knowledge, nobody has actually done this, but the fact that the resources exist is pretty wonderful. Like I said, that's the last video featuring George Wood to be posted, and that was from April of 2015. It's now 2018, so what are all of our Gaming the Clinton Years friends doing now? Navigator's YouTube channel still exists and still posts videos semi-regularly, most of them being footage from their appearances at conventions. Avatoy's YouTube channel still exists too, but remains at 4 subscribers, with no new videos being uploaded since 2011. Mike Grove started a company called Virtual Sports in 2000 to organize and plan esports tournaments. The company does not seem to still be in operation, and, and his current activities are get unknown. A video editor up in here and Don Risher's current activities are also unknown. <laughs> One can only assume that he's still making awkward award show appearances. <laughs> Even at 91 years old, Cloris Leachman is still appearing in movies and TV shows. She appeared as Zoria in Stars' adaptation of American Gods in 2017. 
Tom Sizemore played Anthony Sinclair on the new season of Twin Peaks in 2017. That same year, he pleaded no contest to two charges of domestic abuse for assaulting his girlfriend. Kyle Irvin left Navigator in 2016 and is currently the marketing manager of Pioneer Bank of Harrisburg, Virginia. Tom Allen Sorry, maintains his leadership. A bit of a, so this is an aside. Uh, this is a video editing tip. If you are doing a video like this, do not put music that has lyrics under it under your talking. <laughs> because you get distracted <laughs> because my attention currently is being divided by what this guy is saying and the lyrics of this song here from you persona know? five it's a good song but mm -hmm. i don't want to focus on the song i want to focus on what you're saying aside over <laughs> aside if the over. internet will stop being stinky that is if the internet will let me be over <laughs> manager of Pioneer Jesus. Bank of Harrisburg, Virginia. Tom Allen maintains his leadership positions at both Navigator and Avatoy, and is also a lifetime member of the International Game Developers Association. He occasionally posts on the Avatoy website, which he currently uses, for the looks of it, as his personal diary. The website is a fascinating look inside his mind, with entries ranging from grandiose plans to new web content, news articles on the poor taxpayers, and this article that simply says, Themes, intergenerational conflict, schizophrenia, saggy boobs. <laughs> if you're in the Discord server, I want you to look in there. Uh. I want you to look in there right now. Okay, okay, where? General. Oh. I know. No, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> An actual clip from tonight's stream. Saki boobs. <laughs> the fuck? All are strongly encouraged to read it at your own leisure. He also has an Amazon Studios account where two of his screenplays, The Brightest and Citizen Hussein, are available for free. George Wood also maintains his leadership positions at Navigator and Avatoy. Though he's been off camera for nearly three years, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before he returns. Well, so return there you have recently. it. From humble beginnings yep. on an obscure Maryland public access channel, Gaming in the Clinton Years has a nearly quarter century history behind it. It serves in many different ways as a monument. A monument to how awful video game criticism can be. A monument to idiosyncratic marketing. A monument to the insanity of its creators, and a monument to the internet's power to preserve and spread content that, by any sane logic, should have been forgotten years ago. I don't know what Wood and Allen's next moves are, but the fact that they've been able to, in some form or fashion, keep their content relevant for 25 years is, regardless of its quality, astonishing. Whatever they decide to do, they will never lose me as a viewer, despite how confused or horrified I may be. <laughs> and I feel like we can say the same for everyone here. Yep. Good lord. I will say that the part where he faked his own death is pretty, uh... Yeah! <laughs> yeah lord. It's pretty freaky. Uh-huh. What the fuck? <laughs> I, 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 I can't believe it. There's even more. <laughs> There's even more. This isn't even everything. George Wood Whenever... is the most confusing man of all time. Uh, like, like chat on this man's YouTube channel. It, it, more, more parts to gain the uh, Clinton years. Whatever, uh, whatever navigator does something. <laughs> oh man. And, uh, and, and and yes, as you expect, they are all insane. <laughs> I'm, you know what? Godspeed to George. Never stop being fucking insane. Never mm -hmm. stop being weird. Well, that was fun. Looks up and smiles. Oh, we were talking about him. I was playing more Momon. <laughs> They're Moemon. Okay. Well, how about this, chap? I promise you that I would read one of these reviews. Let's do that.
Let's oh read boy. one. I'll give you. What is this formatting? Yeah, <laughs> all right. Okay, so. Okay. Okay, so we're starting from the top here. Okay. Up at the top here is Pikmin. Okay. Pikmin theme. We are going to read a absolutely insane review for one of my favorite games of all time, chat. But we need to do it to the tune. <clears throat> You're trying to get George Wood voice, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I can't even start. <laughs> Pikmin is one of those games that is so amazing that when you play it, when you play it, you can't even understand. You can't even understand why you haven't heard. Why you, well, you haven't heard the gaming world going mad over it. Remember, remember how much buzz surrounded Ocarina of Time? P Pikmin deserves that kind of buzz. The game is so ingenious and refreshing that you may not be able to put it down. Pikmin may very well be the next great opiate, one that's safe and legal with no side effects. What? <laughs> uh huh? Speaking of plants, the game takes place in a forest area. An alien has crash landed, and you control him as you. You. You uh, control him as he. As he uh, tries to uh, gather 30, 30 scattered parts of his ship within 30 days. You don't have to uh, muscle to. Uh, wait, wait, you, you don't. Oh, yeah. Uh, you don't have the muscle to to uh, carry around a lot of these parts, so you enlist the help of a colony of ant-like creatures called Pikmin. Pikmin grow from seeds in the ground and, when plucked, become fully functional walking beings, sometimes with flower buds on their heads. Three uh, breeds of Pikmin allow the little alien to uh, do his chores. Yellow Pikmin can uh, carry heavy explosive rocks, uh, red Pikmin can walk through fire, and blue Pikmin can uh, walk through water without drowning. All Pikmin can uh, beat up bugs and carry their carcasses to the base of the colony. The food results in more Pikmin sprouts. Pikmin does a wonderful job of creating multitask gameplay. You uh, need to uh, keep building your Pikmin army reserves, while at the same time, organizing the existing soldiers and sending them off to uh, clear paths or gather spaceships. The uh, strategy involved is very easy to learn, easy to execute, and incredibly fun, thanks to the great controls. Pikmin sounds simple, but it plays like nothing you've ever experienced before. Watching the Pikmin work always instills a sense of pride. Like any good drill sergeant, you will, you will grow to love your troops. Just, just uh, don't let it get to your head. Well, that's not pretty normal until the very end right there. <laughs> that was pretty normal except for this, like, one part up here. Logan, you're being oh. too charismatic. Oh, look at the next review is Logan. <laughs> I feel like I have to do this, chat. Yeah. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. The first thing you notice about Sonic Adventure 2 Battle... <laughs> the first thing you notice about Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is the poor edging on Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> the main character from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. As God. usual, Sega does an excellent job using vibrant and crisp colors and highly detailed environments. The landscapes are also masterfully designed in terms of elevation. Okay, hold on. I need to I need to change this. Yeah, yeah. Adventure 2. Okay. Let's start over. I'm Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, the, 
The first thing you notice about my about about <laughs> the first thing you notice about my adventure to battle is <laughs> is it's it's a truly radical graphical quality. As usual, Sega does an excellent job using vibrant and crisp colors and highly detailed environments. The landscapes are also masterfully designed in terms of elevation changes, camera movements, and sheer size. Hold on a second. I'm faster than ever, and my friends and foes offer a little variety with some slower levels. Robotnik reports... <laughs> Robotnik reports for duty as the series' ever-present oh. Bin Laden! Huh? What? Uh-huh. Huh? Huh? What? <laughs> what? Bin Laden? Bin Laden! As what? <laughs> I'm hiding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see hiding. I'm hiding after that one. But the more interesting villain is Shadow. If if only because I haven't seen a lot of that faker. My, much has been said about my trademark speed. While uh, the fast pace is welcome, at times it just feels like I'm. Sk at, sorry, sorry. While the uh, fast pace is welcome, at times it feels like Sonic is only skating on air without any traction. Uh, my stops are a little bit sudden, too. Um, I can stop on a dime, which honestly doesn't feel realistic. <laughs> also, different surfaces don't necessarily feel different. Perhaps... Uh, maybe I'm just being a little picky, but a few of my tweaks certainly would have... It's, it certainly would have made the radical player feel a little more in tune with all of these amazing environments. Of course... Of course... Uh, none of the control characteristically's wait wait control characteristics real really really uh, detracts from the from the um, overall enjoyment. There is plenty to uh, do in the game. The uh, battle arena modes are new in this GameCube version, but those who have played in the single player game on the <laughs> sorry sorry on the uh, Dreamcast don't need to invest. Or rather, either don't need to invest in another bonus version of the game. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Henry, Henry's being a bit of a piece of shit back there. Man. Was very well known for blowing up the moon. Fuck you, moon. You never had the cheese I wanted. Okay, God, so. So this is a little weird. Uh, you have, you have uh, Jack and Daxter up. Oh wait, hold on. Oh, oh man, oh man, oh man, <laughs> oh man, oh man. Yeah. Look at all this. Oh man, oh man, chat. Oh man. Do you see this? Who, who? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> so much. Who's writing these? This is for 2004. Probably oh George God. Wood. <laughs> Bin Laden. All right. Steph turned into an owl. I did, yeah. For like a ooh. brief second there. I will say, though. This is this is a very based opinion of Pikmin. A plus. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. The first thing you notice is the poor edging on Sonic, the main character <laughs> in Sonic Adventure 2. God. What the fuck? I don't know, chat. Is there anything else on here that catches my eye? 
This was the archive of 2001 games. Did, did he do... I need to know if he did, like, Sonic Heroes or something. Uh, let's see. Uh, goes up to 2002. Okay, well then, yeah, that's... That's before it came out, so... We will mm -hmm. not find it on there. We will not find it on there. Yellow Pikmin can carry heavy explosive rocks. Oh, but I did find out he was Spider-Man, though. <laughs> Oh, what on PS One? No, uh, no uh, the the movie game. Oh, yeah, well, send that to me. <laughs> okay. Is that here on this particular one? No, it's on this one. Okay. Okay, chat. You know I have to do this. <laughs> Where is it? It's the second review. The PlayStation Spider-Man games got 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 uh, some attention for the uh, bold use of swing anywhere web swinging, and the PlayStation 2 game offers the same features but with seemingly slower swinging. The swinging doesn't automatically swoop down and up enough during the swing. He's dude, three sentences in. Well, you can uh, raise and lower your height by uh, watching the, either by watching the height meter, you uh, should be able to uh, do this faster. The way you can zip up walls with the speed of a bullet is outstanding. As, <laughs> as is the ability to uh, crawl on ceilings and through air ducts. Swinging among skyscrapers is uh, one of the most uh, graphically rewarding scenes of the year. Check out those window reflections. Cheesy horror star Bruce Campbell does a good job guiding you through the game. And, knock on wood, it looks like Tony McGuire contributed original voice work. The opening CG movie does a good job of summarizing the movie to set up the gameplay. To Toby's CG face is well done. <laughs> Spider-Man is surprisingly well designed, with large levels to explore, but the puzzle elements work so well that you may wish that there were less slugs to fight. While the graphics, while the graphics have been improved from from uh, previous games, gameplay enhancements should have been included as well. Okay. Oh, Bruce, never change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reckless the oh, I literally thought this was I, a Yakuza game for a second. I I just I say I thought I was like wait, you're in Yakuza one. <laughs> oh, oh oh boy, Nelson's game though hit me in. <laughs> wait wait, Kingdom Hearts. Oh no, it's a long review as well. <laughs> you know what? I'll just keep the Spider-Man music playing. We'll do one more and then we'll raid someone. If there's anyone. Oh, wait, this is the wrong one. <clears throat> this... This uh, year's eco is a square... Is, is a square EA's Kingdom Hearts. What the fuck is that sentence? <laughs> Alright. Though the game doesn't feel like it has any relationship to eco, many similarities should be noted. First, the plot involves a mysterious dark force that could take over the world, or at least a few members of royalty. Second, the most common enemies are shadow creatures that, that uh, try to uh, drag people into their dark parallel world. Third, both games have a distinctly heartwarming fairy tale ambiance, mostly realized by the sheer size of their magnetic kingdoms and, by contrast, simple but simplistic characters. Kingdom Hearts begins with the lonely boy named Sora, voiced by Haley Joel Osment. His island has a secret cave at the base of a tree, and inside the cave is a door that no one has been able to open. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, does the door lead to another world? And if so, should it be opened? I can't believe someone wrote this song for a funicular railway. <laughs> this is premium content. This is what I came here for. <laughs> Good. Meanwhile, Mickey Mouse, King of the Magic Kingdom, left his castle in such a hurry that uh, Donald Duck 
is thrown into a panic. Nikki is on a quest to stop the stars from burning out in the sky. They, they have, they have been disappearing one by one, and the force of darkness is to blame. Who knows when the Magic Kingdom will be the next to go? Mickey left a note for uh, Donald and Goofy to find a special key. Why is this just a plot synopsis? I know, right? Where's the actual view, Joel? Sora has the key, and everyone meets in Traverse Town to uh, team up before continuing, uh, right before continuing the uh, journey to find Mickey in Wonderland, the Colosseum, the <laughs> the uh, jungles of Tarzan, um, Acrobar, the the um, innards of Monstro the Whale, the waters of Ariel, the Little Mermaid, <laughs> Halloween Town, Neverland. <laughs> Uh, Winnie the Pooh's Hundred Acre Wood, and the Hollow Bastion, where you'll run into Belle and the Beast, Cinderella, Sleepy Beauty, and her <laughs> devilishly evil enemy, Maleficent. Oh my god, this is a whole ass story recap. It is! <laughs> In these lands, you'll find all characters you would expect to see, plus many more Disney characters that are thematically appropriate. In Wonderland, you'll float down the rabbit hole and catch a glimpse of the famous hustlin' and bustlin' white rabbit. Later, you'll re- what, what is- what is this- I'm straying far away from George here, I feel like. <laughs> nah, he's doing a good job. Later, later, you will realize that Maleficent, Hades, and Jafar are working together on an evil plot. Jafar steals Aladdin's genie to- Jafar steals Aladdin's genie and does some of the dirty work. Riku's character is more complex than at first appears. <laughs> what is that sentence? How does he really feel about Pinocchio, Maleficent, Belle, and Sora, <laughs> and what is his relationship to Captain Hook? Are you intrigued? <laughs> the game is filled with one cameo appearance after another yet it never feels like a parade. The cameos include Disney and Final Fantasy characters. Square has also assembled an impressive roster of big-name talent to, to uh, keep the story out of the confines of boring text reading. Was this actually written by George? How does he, real <laughs> How does he really feel about Pinocchio? <laughs> I feel like my brain is being assaulted. I know. Bill Billy Zane is titillated. Is is titillating <laughs> in his ultra cool tingly delivery of the hooded <laughs> being in the secret cave. <laughs> Emmy winning Steve Burton, General Hospital, The Last Castle, voices the Final Fantasy VII character, Cloud, and sometimes inadvertently bears a striking resemblance to this character when seen from certain angles of his soap opera. What? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what, what? Buffy's vampire hero David David uh, Borinas and music star Lance Bass also lend help. Haley Joel Osment is almost unrecognizable, more as a result of his age than anything else. His uh, dialogue is uh, not as convincing as you would expect. You uh, control Sora in the uh, game's early section. While uh, walking around the island, you will quickly notice an inconvenient camera and uh, jumps that feel like you have peanut butter on your shoes. Speaking of peanut butter, you can uh, play the game in one hand and, <laughs> and, eat, and, and eat peanut butter in the other. That is if you have a third hand, because because... Because it is a dual stick game. <laughs> mm -hmm. All of this is forgivable, of course, because because the the um, art direction is uh, not as detailed as uh, most of Square's work. But in a way, the uh, benefit is that you don't waste time inspecting every nook and cranny for hidden items. At least not to the anal extent normally required in role playing games. What? <laughs> huh? Chowing on some peanut butter. What are you trying to say, George? <laughs> huh? 
The art direction perfectly captures the feel of Disney animated characters and worlds. It looks just right, and the Square created characters fit amazingly well into this package. Kingdom Hearts should not be overlooked as one of the best games of the year. Its sales record shows that gamers are not dismissing it as kid fair, or other kid fair, and hopefully critics will celebrate it as well. Every producer in the industry should should play this game before making any other game uh, based on known characters, films, or other licensed properties. Kingdom Hearts is a masterpiece. That was mostly just a... Uh, no, no, notice how you never once talked about... Notice how there's very little actually talking about the gameplay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, the fuck? I feel like I could read, like, several... <gasps> Oh, I meant to the blind such <laughs> The underwater adventure is based on Nickelodeon's pop culture phenomenon, SpongeBob SquarePants, a highly rated program on kids TV, which which uh, draws 61.5 million viewers per month, more than 21 million of them aged 18 to 49. In SpongeBob SquarePants, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman on PlayStation 2, uh, players assume the role of SpongeBob as he uh, discovers a magic bottle and unwittingly unleashes the Flying Dutchman. Furious that he was uh, disturbed, the uh, Dutchman places a curse on SpongeBob and his friends. To lift the curse, SpongeBob must seek out lost treasures that have been scattered throughout Bikini Bottom. The game features authentic voice talent and all of the favorite characters from the uh, television show, including Sandy Cheeks, Squidward, Patrick Starr, and more. Play <laughs> players, players can explore six worlds with, with multiple challenges per level. Bonus content includes original sketches of the SpongeBob character and a hints and tips video. George Wood mode at the same price of Chills mode. I honestly don't think I do it as good, though. But you know what? I'll go ahead and uh, give you one for free. With There's characters more. like Sandy Cheeks, recent comments... You play as SpongeBob SquarePants from the hit TV show SpongeBob SquarePants. You play as the hit... You play as SpongeBob SquarePants from the hit TV show SpongeBob SquarePants. With characters like Sandy Cheeks... Recent comments about SpongeBob's lifestyle by a goofy guest on the Conan O'Brien show <laughs> seem forever pressed into one's mind. SpongeBob yeah, is a yeah. unique character, even if he's standing on the shoulders of other successful cartoon nerds before him. These days, nerds are cool, and it's something <laughs> we just have to live with. Personally, I think it would be more fun to play the Dutchman and use Spongebob to watch the death, to watch the decks of the pirate ship. Instead, we got to collect letter tiles, costumes, sand dollars, doubloons, and jellyfish. The price of failure is losing your pants and exposing your tidy whiteies. Good grief. Gives a D. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's kind of bad. So yeah, it's kind of bad, but the actual critique makes you go, huh? <laughs> he barely critiques the game. <laughs> yeah. I feel like George considers the Flintstones to be the giants on the shoulder. SpongeBob is standing. That's probably it. Yeah. It's really funny to sort of read that considering, you know, where, where things are in 2023, you know, mm -hmm. like everything mm -hmm. is standing on the shoulders of SpongeBob now. You know, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's it's really weird. I guess I can never be an underwater hero since you need underwear. Why did why did he randomly bring up Conan? That's a good I question. Know, right? Why? Why did he bring up Conan? So weird. And then not far under it is Mortal Kombat, uh, Soul Reaver two, and Marvel vs. Capcom two. Okay, hold on. This right here will be the last one. Okay. Marvel versus Capcom 2. Was it some kind of obtuse gay joke? I don't know. But, like, that seems to be kind of a thing with him. Obtuse gay jokes. Select 
your heroes. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 pits Capcom's legendary characters and Marvel's world-famous superheroes against each other for dream matches of epic proportions. The game features a record number of playable characters, more than 50. The game also delivers new innovations, with, with real three-on-three -three tag team matches and numerous modes of play. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 offers the following enhancements and the return of popular modes of play, including Team Hyper Combo allows three characters to perform super combos successfully. Snapback forces opponents to change characters. Assist Type Select. Players can choose their favorite assist attack. Crossover attack. Players can change characters in the thick of battle. Oh my god. Crossover assist. <laughs> Waiting character rushes on screen to assist your playing character. Crossover counter. Waiting character performs life-saving counter attacks. Crossover combination. Three characters perform a super combo simultaneously. Advancing Guard allows players to push back their opponent. At the beginning of the game, a uh, player, play, players, <laughs> at the beginning of the game, players can have access to 24 playable characters. From the uh, Marvel Universe, players can uh, choose from Cable, Marrow, Cyclops, Captain <laughs> America, Doctor Doom. Rogue, Psych Psylocke, Wolverine, Iceman, Spider-Man, Hulk, or Venom. The lineup of Capcom characters includes Jill, Tron, Ruby Heart, Sun Son, Amingo, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, Hayato, uh, Sakura, uh, Guile, Ryu, Zangief, um, on a crease, I believe, and Strider. As players meet certain conditions, uh, they will gain access to many hidden and secret characters. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 includes all the features from the arcade version. Now, as never before, play players can choose a character to experience three-on-three -three fighting mayhem. Players can perform limitless hyper combos, crossover counters, advancing guard, and super jumps, all popular features from the series. Oh. Okay. Okay, and this is apparently the review down here. This right here is apparently the review chat. Okay, yes. FOV TV. Uh, the game feels outdated with a limited character animation. Uh, the graphical effects are very colorful, but it's way too easy to go crazy with wild moves and endless effects bonanzas. Indeed, okay. The amount of characters is amazing, and thanks to the three-on-three -three gameplay, the screen will be filled with so much action that the thrill of it will... Sorry, sorry, will go away much faster because of the fact that you'll be desensitized to the point of taking it for granted. That's actually kind of a decent point in some context. Mm -hmm. I feel like. I feel like that there is such a thing as too much. But the thing is, that's not the point of this game. Nope. I keep expecting him to say three-on-three three action. I love the combination of Logan and Zack. It's hard to create this kind of chemistry with two naturally funny people. Ah, uh, thanks. Thank you. It my heart. That really, really means a lot. Mm -hmm. We want to take you for a ride, chat. I will say that this is honestly kind of an insane roster, though. Like, the fact that this has 60-plus characters, and then three mm -hmm. follows it up with... With honestly not as of an impressive roster is kind mm -hmm. of is honestly kind of crazy. I remember Mega Man was on this roster, wasn't he? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Cool. I keep expecting him to see th to say three on three action. <laughs> but again, like he fucking barely even talks about the game. But like the point of it isn't to be wild by graphics, George. The point of it is to you know, play a fighting game, right? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to play a fighting game. I mean, like that's what it's for. You, you fucking fight. <laughs> God, it makes me wonder what what he would what he would think of something like Dragon Ball Fighters. 
What, what do you think of fighters? <laughs> Again, I will say that it is very admirable that he's able to remain semi-relevant after all this time. You know? Mm-hmm. And the fun thing is, all we're doing is, like, perpetuating that, too. So, so, uh, so, uh, so, 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 Logan, so, Logan, for, uh, so, Logan, for next week, <laughs> do we want to watch the update stuff? Do we want to watch the update stuff, chat? Well, I think, thankfully, the majority of them aren't that long. Most of them are under, uh, uh 10 minutes. There's only, like, two that's over 10. Oh, well. Okay. We mm -hmm. can we can probably do that then. Mm -hmm. We could probably do that. But yeah. Uh Jesus Christ. This was this was a trip. Yeah. This was very, very much of a trip. Thank you all for going on it with us. This was absolutely insane. Uh yeah, you know what's you know what's truly insane? Uh, the fact that the game of clean years is literally just a bl blip on the insanity. <laughs> I know. It's just a blip on the radar. Yeah. It's not. It was not just a trip. It was a journey. Well, I'm glad that we were able to take it with you, chat. And I apologize <laughs> for my speech. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But for now. Let's let's write some more. I, I, I still I, I like how one of the results here is George Wood reviews Final Van Eight and it's just like wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Again? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I can, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the fucking wild bit at the end. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Who do we want to raid? That's the question. Is anyone still up? Yes, actually. I'm seeing people. Oh, Mookie Mori is still up. Let's go. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, d uh, d uh, Dean rated her like Dean rated her like uh last night. I believe I I believe it was, and I was like, "Hello." She's like, "Mari Family 15. I fucking love you." <laughs> <laughs> this has yeah. Been... It was, uh, Pure insanity. Ah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely has. That, that's that's really funny to think about, Zach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, no, because it's kind of like I love Mario. <laughs> I fucking love Mario. Yeah, yeah. So when she was just like, "Boy, family, fifteen, a fucking movie," I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> Let's take it back. <laughs> I was about to say like she's never even spoken to you, has she? <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. There's only like one other time she's spoken to me, but but in that context, it's just referring to like the character of Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Mario fanboy fifteen. I fucking love Mario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I I'm looking forward to next week for more insanity because, oh man, Navigator still does weird things. <laughs> they they definitely do. Mm -hmm. Either that, or, or we do that launch stream of Two K Twenty Three, because that is coming out next week, and I would like to, oh, and I would yeah. like to do that. Which day next week? Uh, Friday. <laughs> oh shit! Friday. It launches next Friday, and uh, I think that would be fun to sort of do. But for mm. now, let's rate someone. Uh, yeah, but, uh, as I say, oh, well, anything we just do is on Thursday. <laughs> I never expected in a billion years, fucking GamerGate to get a mention. I know, I, right? If it dates, it so hard, dude. It's so God, dated. I, I God, I, God, the the person I have on there, I'm just like, I hate this guy. I do. I that is go away heat, dude. Mm-hmm. That is some. That is some wrestling go away heat right there. Just was like, do please, not like him at all. It's like, please shut the fuck up and let George Wood talk, please. I know, like this isn't about you, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the smelliest dude, bro. I know you can smell the axe body spray. You know, mm -hmm. you can smell that the axe body spray and like, and like piles of Playboy. 
Oh no. I love how he, I love how they didn't lose their touch when they did those Navicare <laughs> awards. I know. Oh. Let's go ahead and raid Monty over here. She is doing a Mario tent or rather rather a Mario Day thing. Mm. It looks like she is one just a second. Ah ads. Fuck. I want to tell you what she's doing specifically. Ah, yes, the sex compilation. That took me back, dude. That, like, yeah. made me... That, like, made me brace in my seat, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was bad. That was no good. No good at all. No good at all. No good at all. Oh. Oh, she's she's spinning a wheel where, like, uh, depending on where it lands, that's... Sorry, that's the uh, Mario game that she plays. Oh. And it just landed on Mario Pinball. <laughs> so... Let's go! <laughs> so go over there and uh, wish her luck in Mario Pinball. And... God, I want to have a unique... I want to have a unique thing for this. Because there's so much to pull from. Surprise! Surprise! We only got one game in the Clinton years redeem on this. <laughs> Rest in piss to George Wood. <laughs> God, that fake death thing was a trip. Rest in piss to George Wood. Literally, literally, just keep in the question mark chat. Just keep in the question mark <laughs> when we when we when we raid her. Oh my gosh! Again, thank you, thank you all very much for hanging out with us tonight. We'll we will be back tomorrow with Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's been fun. Thank you all for hanging out with us once again. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.